Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to announce that we are actually live and in the server for map two of ESEA Invite Grand Finals. It's Fourier Tech versus EVL Gaming coming out. It's Granary for the second map. Uh, the first map, if you've been following along, was a win for EVL Gaming. The underdogs come into this series. It was five to two. The score line we weren't able to watch that thanks to ESEA's SCV servers not working for us. But we're here and we got a spectacular crew of casters and analysts for you. It's myself, Corn Pop, and Marxist as the casters. Sam's gonna be your production man. Then we got a whole team of analysts. It's what was this like Jarrett, Patty, Marmalou, and Shamu are gonna be giving you the top analysts between map and uh pretty shortly here. So Marxist, why don't we go over the rosters real quick and then we'll kick it over to them. All right, I'll run down your rosters here. The winners of the previous game, but coming in as the underdogs out of the loser bracket are EVL, Cookie Jake on Medic, Badonsky on Demo, and Rando is returning to pocket, apparently. Garbuglio will be the roamer. Yomps and Corsa are your scouts. Yeah, I don't... Oh, you want to go? You can oh, take yeah, it. Oh, yeah, I'll do it again, man. <laughs> I'm psyched for this. So we got over on the other side, the losers, but who are still in the winner's bracket are Nursey on Med, Habib, a.k.a. Assassin on Demo Man, Banny and Blades are your soldiers, and Free State and Eric are the scouts. Awesome. Now we can uh, send over the analysis. They've been talking all throughout that first map. They are certainly excited to be here, so take it away, boys. What do you have to say about this map? I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty, like sure that uh i don't think a whole lot of people expected to do evl uh as their number ones but after snakewater i don't think it's uh, out of anyone's mind that they're definitely in this match despite coming from the lower bracket and uh they're definitely a force to be reckoned with and freya's gonna have to change some stuff up if they want to be able to take map two well like earlier in the season freya also played them on this map and they 5-1 them but EVL's looking a lot stronger than before, so maybe they can pull out something a little bit better on these mids and put up a better fight than last time. Yeah, I mean, the story for the last map really was kind of the mids. Uh, EVL really put themselves in good spots throughout the whole game by just kind of winning mids, and they did that through really good pressure on Habib on most mid fights, and that kind of shut down most of the aggression on the Froyo side. So if they can uh, have good mids here, I think EVL are just going to win out just makes life easy when you win every mid on the map. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think EVL's chances really rely on having to win mids here, because this Granary is a map where mids control the flow of the game a lot, I think. You can convert uh, mids into rounds a lot easier on this map than other maps, I feel like. And I think uh, they're going to have to really focus on the shutting down uh, B, which in map one they did a pretty good job of on mids, I think. Another thing to note is, in during Snakewater, there were a lot of back cap, back cap attempts that would result in, maybe not the cap, but somewhere else on the map, something else would go down in EVL's favor. And then I think there were, like, at least two just full-on back caps that, like, literally capped them last and got the round. And if you can back cap against Froyo, and at least, like, try to do it and then have success somewhere else on the map, on Snakewater of all maps, and you're going into Granary next, if you can live through the mid-fights at least, and then continue to do that, but do it on this map, then you're probably going to find even more success, unless Froyo change a lot about how they're transitioning. Yeah. Uh, this level of the game, really, it comes down to kind of how much you can disorganize the other team. And you'll see a lot of stuff where players are trying to get behind and create space uh, throughout most team fights. And if whichever team is essentially better with dealing, that sort of, uh, I guess, chaotic... With, with that chaotic environment, you'll find that that team will likely be winning most of the fights. EVL can try and find a way to just get behind and just shove the Froyo flank. They could definitely just completely just flank them and just roll them inside of a choke point. Yeah, um, I don't know. My prediction for this game, it really depends on the mids. I think Froyo will probably take it honestly i don't know about you jared mm. i think it is going to be mid dependent um because like shamu said a mid can definitely turn into a round so even if your transitions are really neat um you're not really going to get to play them and uh, execute them if you can't even like lift the mid fight and you're just getting pushed to your last so uh, i don't know 
it, it the, the way that Granary Mid's going to play is a whole lot different than Snake Water, so there's might be a couple different ways that the teams are going to decide to just play it out in terms of their strategies and the pace that they take it. So, even though the EVL won like pretty convincingly in the scoreline for Snake Water, I think uh, even though they might have an edge on paper, since Granary's just a whole other map in terms of how it's going to need to play out, uh, it's definitely kind of a toss-up. Freyo's definitely not out of it yet. That would be paused. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's paused. Yeah, it's One a more pause. thing to note is Blaze has two different Cow Mangler charge shot roulettes. You can either do the Catwalk or Choke, and if you can try and catch him out, you could honestly just win them a mid. Straight off that. Yeah, that definitely play a role. This mid, though, is 100% more soldier dependent than the uh, than Snake Water mid, and I think that's kind of, quite frankly, what is going to decide which team kind of comes out on top. I think, honestly, as of right now, I would confidently say that the EVL scouts are just, they're playing really well, and I would give them like a complete edge over the Froyo scouts. But this map does not uh, pertain to scouts doing particularly a lot, actually. So... I really think it does gonna it is gonna come down to whether Rando and and Garbuglio can have better bombs than Banny and uh, Blaze. That'll kind of be the deciding factor for the mid. And we're going live. All right, here we go then, Marxist. It's ESEA invite finals. This is what all season's been leading up to. It's Froyo Tech versus EVL Gaming. EVL have uh, the advantage with the one map best of three, but Froyo Tech have the overall advantage. Uh, winning that one. Do you have a prediction before we can get to this mid marks? I'm I'm saying EVL is going to continue their momentum onto this map. At least that's what I hope to see. But we'll see. Granary can be an unpredictable map. It can. But Dancy's going to be getting here quite a bit faster than Habib. Actually, there was a pause throughout that pregame, so that might have caused an issue. Habib's very low right off the bat. He's so hurt. He's going to get that pack. He's going to be fine for now, but Badonski is also taking a little bit of damage down on the floor. Froyotech rotating around their left-hand side. Free State's poking around. Nobody's getting aggressive just yet off of this, but here comes a bomb in from Basol Soldier on each side. Garbuglio's coming in. Blaze had to kind of back off, and both the Froyo players ended up going down to that exchange. Garbuglio is barely getting out of this one. Eric falls as well. A lot of players are dead on Froyotech, but their nursing medic is getting alive. Course is very low, but gonna be okay. And there was the pause. I think Banny lagged out there. Ate a pipe from Badonski to uh, end his life. But that's going to be EVL Gaming taking the first mid. Yeah, a very solid mid for them. The dual soldier aggression got a huge amount of kills. Killed about half the team. And uh, that's really all you need on Granary. The danger there for Froyo was they decided to opt for a passive mid. They ended up getting bunched together. But now we see this Uber come in. It's actually just going for an exchange off of a scout Uber. They're going to try to juggle this med out of here. But they're going to make the great escape, it looks like. And now we are back here to basically a stalemate, Clone Pop. But they may oh. keep trying to go. I was very worried for Cookie Jake and that he was getting juggled outside that shutter, but he's gonna be okay now. And the Froyo soldiers are peeking forward, getting pretty aggressive. They spot a Garbuglio, and they're actually banned. He does lose that trade, but they're gonna take that uh, 1v1 now. So it's currently a 5 on 5 at the moment. Still a lot of fighting going down in the upper area. Blaze is taking quite a bit of damage, Garbuglio as well. And that, actually, we did see a soldier get in. Trades with Habib. Now that's a really nice pick because no demo on last is going to make it really hard to hold. And EVL almost have 100% Uber charge. Of course, Nursi does as well, but they're going to be pushing in off of that. Yeah, they might go off a rando's trade with Habib, but uh, it looks like they're just going to chill for right now. Didn't want to go. I guess their their Yomps was there yet, so maybe that was too much of a risk for them. Now, one thing, Cookie Jake's positioning is kind of all over the place on this lobby hold. Uh, and it surprises me that Froyo is not attempting to victimize him. There's Yomps going in for the suicide play. Gets nothing. The counter sack is now coming in. It's Banny. He's trying to get in behind. He's in lunchbox right now. So he's going to be causing a distraction. But Blaze going to go down to Badonski. Here comes the fight with Banny. He's going to kill Rando. But die to Corsa. 
I mean, Banny was low behind for a long time. You gotta give him credit for even getting one kill, but EVL Gaming, they're gonna push off that. They're sending in Corsa, and Cookie Jake has committed it well. He's popped the Nuka Charge off, but Corsa, too far forward, is gonna drop before he can get flashed. So now it's just Badonski trying to take some of this Uber. Nursey did uh, pop her Uber Charge off as well, and they're gonna get Garbuglio with that, but easily Furry Tech should be able to hold this one unless they lose too many here. Habib is gonna survive, get an arrow from his medic. Free State dies up top, and that could be important. Eric gets another frag onto the medic too. That's gonna certainly make curtains for EVL Gaming. They have to back off. They only have three players alive. Maybe they can do some sort of crazy back cap, but Foreo should be able to take this. Another soldier actually finds a frag on a Banny before Habib takes him down with the stickies, and I think this is probably EVL. Are they going to hold on? <laughs> Nursi getting an Uber saw actually off on the scout. So uh, EVL, they look like they might hold. Yeah, the Uber saw frag is actually going to bring them an Uber almost right now. EVL is doing a pretty good job of applying pressure here to prevent this point from being recapped. But uh, with an Uber ready to come into them, yeah. But wisely, EVL's gonna maybe get out of here. They're gonna have a lot of pressure on Cookie Jake again, but he's gonna get out. Corsa is the only death of. Whoa! Never mind. They're gonna lose four players off of this. And uh, well, that on the granary is usually gonna result in losing two points. <laughs> Yeah, I was watching Garbuglio in the back lines. He wanted to get aggressive. He went for a sneaky flank, but he wasn't able to secure the frag on a Banny. Ben is able to get out, and then the rest of Freya was able to converge onto him. Um, so that was one of the four frags that ended up happening in that exchange. Uh, but otherwise, EBL Gaming, they look to hold this yard. They do have Uber ads, so they're getting aggressive in the middle, actually. And Freya Tech, they might be a little caught out of position. Blaze taking quite a bit of damage, but Garbuglio bombs in, gets shut down by Free State. EBL Gaming, they still have a lot of position, a lot of momentum. Freya Tech's giving them a lot of respect. They know, well, there was some, uh, a bit of an Uber advantage, but it's equal now. Freya Tech, I guess they're just going to give up that mid off of a one-man advantage. So that's a pretty good play there from EBL, just reclaim it. They did lose Garbuglio, but the, oh Ooh. no, Habib's sticky trap is going to ruin the dreams of EBL, and that is going to hurt really bad. They, no one has even died yet for Froyo. The dual layer sticky trap wow. is going to be the one that gets them. Because you check that inside lip there, and uh, if you don't see one... Sometimes there's a sticky trap on the other side, too, and then you're dead. Habib was the only Foreo player to go down in that, and he ended up killing himself with his stickies. There's the edge going down, actually, with Snipe. That was a huge play. Uh, with no medic, Eric gonna fall really quickly afterwards to Corsa, so that's two players down on Foreo Tech. Banny falls to the soldier as well. There goes Free State. Suddenly, everything just got turned around. Uh, Blaze is in a lot of trouble here. He's gonna end up falling to Corsa as well. Pushing up with Yomps on the sniper class, this completely turned around, there's only one player, it's Habib who survived through that, so he might be setting some traps, but meanwhile, EDL Gaming, they're gonna take that middle point. Yeah, well, what, when it looked like Doom, they got that <laughs> the big headshot, and it saved the day, so EVL now in perfect position to push, it was looking like we might be watching them play on a last hole. And now they're ready to pin Froyo against the wall themselves. Very early Uber. It is doing absolutely nothing for EVL. So maybe they'll get lucky and no one will know. <laughs> yeah, I think they saw. I think it was like he got juggled and then forced. I'm not quite sure what happened with Cookie Jake there, but it was an awful Uber charge either way. They're still holding ground in this yard area though, and Furry Tech aren't looking to push out just yet. EVL Gaming still has that sniper as well. Maybe once Free State spawns up. Freo will feel confident enough to push in with this, but they're still peeking with their sniper, and here comes the pop on Nursey very early, scared of that sniper, giving a lot of respect to Yomps. He goes down to Eric, however, as he was Ubercharger running forward, but look at Garbuglio and Badonski, they've kind of wrapped around, but they look to be a little caught out of position. They're going to trade a lot of frags back and forth overall for it. Tech are coming out on top. Their medic made it alive. He was backing off with Corsa the whole time, so they're going to be okay to build this Ubercharge advantage back up and hold yard, maybe, but uh, still losing the midpoint to Freo. Yeah, it's going to be close, but I think EVL is going to get all their spawns. So, due to the Uber advantage, they're in perfect position to leapfrog this. They may try to force in even a little bit early, and that looks like that's what they're going for. Taking over the left crates, but Yops is going to go down, but so is Habib. So, that's a pretty good trade out for them, but Rando and Garbuglia are going to go down with no soldiers. It's pretty hard to push on Granary, and now they're going to have to pop Uber for just a scout and a demo and try to get what kills they can, but one is not going to be enough. They got a lot of damage down on her Nursey, but it wasn't quite enough. She managed to escape, and so with all that, EBL Gaming are in a bad position at this point. They're going to try to hold on to the second point. They got two soldiers spawning right now, so they should uh, be able to have some presence here, but I think they're choosing to back off instead. Furio Tech are going to be able to cap off this point. 
at least uh, get some time onto it. We'll see if EVL want to re-aggress. It's going to be a tough one to push. The enemy team is right there, but we'll see. We'll spam back and forth. There is full ad for Froyo, 50%, so EVL Gaming really don't have any reason to uh, stay here, but if they can, I mean, that would be great for them. They're just taking a lot of spam, actually, crossing the sight line, standing right in the middle. She finally got the pack and backed off, but that was a little scary. Finally, the point gets capped off for Froyo Tag. Blaze and Free State are up in the lunchbox, not really being contested, but there is a soldier down beneath them. That's a rando, and he's actually taking the trade. Free State's going to be able to win that 1v2, and uh, with one player down, EVL Gaming might be facing a push in from last. Froyo Tag, they're poking into this left door. They do have this uber ad, but it's no longer an advantage. 100%, they're gonna pop it off now. Course is taking a lot of damage. He has to run back to his medic who gets flashed. Now they're gonna be pushing right back into Froyo Tech. They have to all back off, but nobody died on Froyo Tech except for Free State. So this is actually maybe uh, an opportunity for them to push right back in. We'll see. They didn't get any frags either, so I'm not sure if it's gonna happen for them right away, but they probably won't lose this point at least. Yeah, it was a real botch on Froyo's part where they took forever capping second to save their uber instead of just ubering in to take the point and then they just they wasted their uber anyways so i i would have been in mind to just pop uber there and run scouts into them because it's not, they, they're not invincible and they're, they weren't running any off classes besides sniper so you would have been perfectly fine now we got badonski being killed by banny however so that is a big kill in there and that Rando is Free gonna state. die as well, but the Free man's state. gonna go down. Free State getting the big pick there just in time. Nursey is gonna have Uber as well, pushing in with it. There's a heavy getting juggled through the air in Yop's not gonna be able to do a whole lot. Course is trying to save the day, but it's not gonna be enough. Maybe big plays right now for Badonski. He's kill oh he finally falls. There he goes. So Badonski tried to make it interesting for a bit, but Froyo taking the first round. Yeah, 1v4 on last. I don't care how good of a dome man you are. That's not something that uh, you're going to pull off very often. But for Tech, they're going to take this first round off of that uh, disappointing loss in the first map. We'll see if they can continue to come out strong. But Donsi getting here faster than Habib once again. And Habib's very low on health, actually. He's going to get the pack before he eats any stickies. But that was a little dangerous right off the bat. We'll see how Foreo Tech wants to continue with the rest of this mid. They did lose the first one. So EVL Gaming, they just need to repeat the same thing they did last time. And this could work out well for them. Habib's pushing pretty far aggressive on the left side. And now... Yomp's getting behind his right as Garbuglio's gonna bomb in here. Looks like Yomp's gonna go on first, but there goes Habib as well. Nursey finds a frag on a Garbuglio. There goes another one at a free state. No medics down just yet, but we'll see how this mid still unfolds. Two down on each side, making it a four on four. Both teams want to commit to this. They're still fighting, but Furitech has the upper ground. Banny's bombing in. There we go. Finding the frag on a Cookie Jake. Corsa as well gonna go down to Eric and Furitech can pop the Uber charge off. Complete collapse from EVL Gaming. They're gonna lose their last player and making it a full wipe on mid. Uh, that was a very risky play from Froyo to guess that they had uber advantage there and bomb to kill the med and then pop. So kudos to them. They, they really laid it out there on that mid because if they were wrong about any of the arrowing that was going on or any of the building there, then they probably would have lost uh, the round. Probably. Watch for Corsa now. He's up on Sniper, taking some shots. Didn't hit anything that first time through into Jurati. Nobody's up there, though. They also have, uh, what is that, Rando? No, it's Yomps up on Engineer. Um, so a couple of defensive off classes coming out for EVL Gaming. They're looking to stall this Furitech aggression. They do have this Uber ad, so presumably Furitech is looking to push in. They are all kind of up in this area, so they might take it up here. We'll see, they do have 100% now. They're gonna pop their Uber Charge off pretty early. They got a lot to deal with. There's a level two sentry gun, but they're gonna bomb Badonski really early and take down that demo frag. That's super important, but Garbuglio is still up on these pipes. Corsa as well, looking to put some pressure on. Nothing really yet. Here comes another player out on Heavy. That's gonna be a lot. Here comes a couple good frags from Froyo Tech. They're gonna lose a lot. Habib ends up taking one of the Corsa, but I'm not sure. Froyo Tech, this push look botched. Unless Blaze can come in, actually. Habib finds another one. Blaze dies for it, but there's only two players alive on EVL Gaming. Froyo Tech, they don't have a lot of health, but if this Heavy can stall, he's out with he's the out shotgun. Ammo. Oh, no. Yeah, that's the tragedy of the cross-map heavy shooting, is that he does shoot very expensive ammo at a pretty fast rate and uh, you can end up being unable to defend when you're spamming those three damage shots across the map. But here we go into another mid corn pop. It's looking a little dire for EVL. The tables have been turned. 
So it has. This has historically not been a great map for EBL Gaming. They haven't won on this map in two seasons. Season 22 was the last time they ever won a game on this map. But Nazi getting bombed really early by a couple of soldiers. And there goes Garbulu, the first one to go down to Eric. Free State as well falling. And there's another player. It's the soldier, Rando, who fell. And they're going to just back off of this EBL game. They don't like it. A couple of scouts are still in, but Yomps looks like he's just going to be able to get out unless Eric can chase him down. Here comes a super aggressive soldier bomb in. Blaze wasn't liking that. He got shot down by a scout. EBL Gaming, they're going to hold this yard unless Yomps wants to go in really hard. All right, he'll just die. Yeah, I don't know really what Yomps was doing there because he's going to have a super long delay time. But uh, I, maybe he was behind? I don't know. I wasn't, no? I wasn't paying attention to what he was doing at that time. But now it's more or less even Z's except for a dead Yomps. And I'm surprised Froyo is... Yeah, there we go. Here's the movement. Banny bombs in deep. But he's going to get counter jump and take it down. But Badonski dies in the chaos. So a nice play there from Free State to kind of weasel his way in. And uh, that could be time to go. Plays could be serviceable. And they get that fire shot as well. And yeah, they're pushing in left. So here they go. We're probably going to see an exchange here. Yeah, they're both popping it off. Nobody has actually died in this so far. A couple of shiny players, but uh, nothing else to really shoot at. Freyo, they back off, and it looks like EBL Gaming are just going to uh, continue to sit here in yard. Not much from that exchange. Um, I really like that play, though, when Free State went in off of some distraction play from the Bombing Soldiers. They did that earlier when they were pushing last as well. Free State beautifully gets in there, and he's able to uh, completely capitalize off EBL Gaming being so distracted. Uh, we'll see if they can pull someone off that again. I mean, it's 50% Uber Charge from both teams, so we're just waiting for them to build back up, and then maybe we'll see some sacks, some off classes. We'll see how they play it. Yep. This says this point has traditionally been an, an area where teams feel very vulnerable. Uh, so they tend to play it about as safe as possible. And we'll see what they choose to do here. Both sides now getting their Ubers. And uh, we'll see what the option is from Froyo. The Banny Bomb into Free State Poke did really, really well. And out, well, maybe. Banny peaked the, the new door, the tiny door. But uh, nothing there. And there goes Blaze's big rocket. They're, they're just going to Uber. Yeah, they're just running for it. And I'm not sure if I like the strategy. Eric beefed all of his shots. And uh, Cookie Jake didn't have to pop at all. Finally, he pops off. That's so late after they kill Nursey. Cookie Jake pops the Uber charge off. I can't believe that Eric didn't hit a single shot. Pushing into the medic. Froyotech, they don't have a hope. And now Blaze was in on the medic. And that was a super... Beautifully timed bomb. Free State's really low. He's going to end up going down, and I believe almost every player, if not every player, okay, Habib stayed alive, but otherwise, all the Froyo players died in that. EVL Gaming will be able to cap off this middle point, but really nice job by Blaze to be able to completely not let his team roll back to last. There goes Habib. Yeah, he saved the day there, did Blaze, <laughs> more or less. And Nursey is going to have a slight advantage here, and this push over mid is going to be difficult to <laughs> negotiate. Nursey's going to get a frag, <laughs> and Corsa will die as well, but Donsky's going to pick up free state. But that may not matter too much. EVL looks like they just want to keep coming in. They're going to get blazed, but Yomps is going to die. Brando's going to take out Vanny and Eric uh, with the help of the ground. And then Badonsky's going to take out Nursey, Corn Pop. They just pushed right back in and blew him away. EVL Gaming does not care. I mean, Froyo Tech, they have advantage. They're sitting on mid. They're like, all right, we can slow it down. And then just an EVL Gaming truck hits them in the face. And they're totally not prepared for it. They completely out -DM them. And Froyo Tech are suddenly sitting back on their last. Free State's building up a gun. Eric's poking in with his sniper rifle. He's looking to peek on this right-hand side. But, I mean, they have, what is this, 80 70% Uber disadvantage. Oh, there we go, Corsa. I mean, that's something. Um, but that's only a scout. And with this big of Uber advantage, I'm not sure it's going to make a huge difference. Blaze is poking in through the top. But, no, he's forced back. Yeah, they've, they've had some risky positioning here, but they're going in up top. Sometimes that doesn't really work out, so we'll see what's going on. Free State playing that heavy, trying to live as long as possible, but Blaze is going to go down as well. So right now, advantage to EVL. Nursey doesn't have enough Uber, and they're all over the point. And that will be the first round for EVL, bringing it 2-1. to one. Maybe this will be the beginning of a comeback. That would actually be really incredible. I mean, EVL Gaming, uh, completely the underdogs coming in. I think they won one out of six matches against Froyo in the regular season and the first time they met in playoffs. So, certainly not a great track record this season. We'll see, though. Badonski still getting here faster than Habib consistently on these mids. It uh, seems to have helped them. EVL Gaming have been doing all right on these mids. They haven't won them all, I don't think, but uh, they've been doing pretty well. 
Yomps is pushing aggressive on these crates, but he hasn't found any players to shoot at just yet. They're still jumping back and forth. Free State's actually taking quite a lot of spam, and there goes the first frag on the meta. Khabib got a really nice pipe to find that one. And we see Randos jumping forward. A lot of health down on EBL Gaming. They don't really have much at all. Being bombed now. Eric finds a frag. Corsa goes down. Blaze found that one. And now they're just bombing all over the place. Trying to get anything they can, Marks, as it's only Yomps. And he dies a complete ace on this middle. Yep, that's what I like to call an ace middle. So you wipe out the other team and you, you don't lose anybody. And traditionally on Granary, and especially now that the point has been moved so close to second, these are taken by many players to be open and shut. So we're going to see a super fast Uber come in here eventually. Whenever they're see Whoa, Nursey's going to get forced. They screwed around with the point for way too long and Rando forced him. The seventh player is going to cause a problem as well. Uncharacteristic play out of Froyo to just kind of stand around and not do anything. I don't think it matters though. All of EVL Gaming are so passive and Banny's in a behind on Cookie Jake already. He's going to get this frag. Everybody else has already died to the team. For a sec, they walked in. They didn't even need a good overcharge marks as they were able to completely kill everyone. I'm not really sure I like that uh, engineer play on last. It was only level one and they weren't really prepared for it. Yeah, I would have opted for heavy in that mm -hmm. scenario. But uh, since we are at halftime, I think we're going to kick Ooh. it on over to the analyst desk for however long they're going to give us for a halftime. So we'll take it on over. Okay. I'm not really, I'm not really sure um, what's what's going on. I think that some of the pacing has changed. Definitely going into Granary. Granary is a map where you have to play way slower, and the pace is maybe even faster than Snake Water because there's a lot of um, decisions that are made that are so hasty that not everyone's totally on the same page on EVL, and a lot of things are desynced. And Froyo is definitely recognizing some of the players on their team that are being focused and putting more emphasis on keeping them alive, like Khabib and Nursi, and making sure that they're able to find success in the mid-fights and just try to take over EVL's half the map to get onto their last. Yeah, I want to point out that the mids uh, have been pretty bad for EVL in that they have not supported their demo at all. Uh, I feel like Badonsky is being left out to dry, not really getting many heals on the mid, and Habib is just getting all the heals in the world and has so much room to work with. I just noticed Badonsky constantly like trapped in a corner, shooting a long range stickies. Like he can't do anything, and I feel if your demo on this map, you know, TF2 hasn't changed that much from you know the olden days, but uh, this map still requires like you know. You need your demo to have pretty big impact on this map for success, and Habib in general is just having way more room to just control the game and uh, and damage players. Whereas Benassi is just he's just I feel like he's doing nothing on mids 90% of the time. Just he's not getting healed, and he's forced to play really bad positions. Um, and I totally agree with the point there. It's just the kind of the hastiness, and I know that. Uh, Corsa, who I kind of assume that is the uh, main caller there, from what I know, and uh, I know that he has a tendency to rush things, and I would kind of put it this way, he plays at a scout speed, but this map needs to be played at a soldier's speed to really have success, in my opinion, and they're just going too fast, they're trying to shove themselves through chokes that are way too easily just spammed, and uh, actually it looks like we're going in the half. Yep, so thank you guys for your analysis here, but we'll be taking on over here as we see the green text. Corn Pop, well, I'll let you take it away. Who are you looking at? Oof, well, I mean, Badonski has beaten Habib every single mid, so I'm going to watch Badonski as he's trying to roll out to middle. We'll see, he's actually, Habib's pretty good. Still not as fast as Badonski, but uh, he's been slower this game, so it's nice to see him picking things up. Really high bomb in really early from Garbuglio, actually straight on to Nursi, and he's gonna get that frag immediately, and so goes everybody else on Freyotech, but EVL, they lost a lot as well. Their medic ended up going down, and it's a three on two already. This hasn't even been five seconds in the middle. Here we see Randa go down, and it's only Badonski as a demo left alone on the middle. This is not where you want to be. He actually might be able to get out alive, but there's two scouts chasing him down, Marxist. He shouldn't be able to survive here. There he goes. Free State finds that frag. Decisive and fast mid from Freyotech. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Usually, when the other team is standing around on bats like that, it's super hard to bomb into them. But EVL did it anyways, and uh, they, I mean, at least they killed Nursi. 
So, I don't know if that's a sign of desperation that they their minds are blown by these mids, but they're pushing back in, and this has worked well for them, but there's a back cap on from Froyo, and we'll see if it's going to be dealt with. This running around behind them, and now EVL is starting to get victimized pretty badly. They're all turned around. Yeah, and I guess that's kind of the downside of that super aggro strat that EVL Gaming have been playing, I guess, all half so far. Um, is that you open yourself to that back out play that's made them come all the way back to last, but Donsky wasn't able to win the 1v1 against the scout, so... Free State already running in here on last. I'm not sure if this is a sack, but Blaze is coming in right at the same time. He's on Cookie Jake, but not a lot of damage has been done. There goes the Soldier, and now needs to connect this, but can't do it. Some great defensive Soldier play by the pocket there. Rando was able to shut down that aggression from Freyo Tech, that two-man sack, and... Looks like the medic is going to be able to survive with full uber charge. Cookie Jake will be all right for now, but Fanny is in the lunchbox actually in a little bit of a 1v1 situation with Rando, who's just trying to get behind there. Of course, it died to Habib, and now watch Rando. He's all the way in behind on the medic actually and gets the force along with some help from Garbuglio. Both the uber charges were popped off there. Garbuglio on the left side is going to get taken down by Fanny. And those only three players will get alive left on EBL Gaming. There goes one of them. It's only Badonski and Cookie Jake. They're going to do their best, but there's a lot of Froyo players running in here. Mark says, I'm not sure it's possible. The full white Froyo tech are going to make this. Four to one. Yeah, uh, I don't really know what EVL was doing there. Maybe they just, uh, they've just decided they'd rather go play Viaduct at this point. <laughs> but, uh, I, that was a very strange series of events here. But we're going to mid again. We'll see what EVL's got up its sleeve. This map is swingy enough. You can come back from a 4-1. This time the demos got here pretty much exactly at the same time. Habib's still coming out with a little bit lower health though. Charge shot from Blaze isn't going to connect with anybody right off the bat. Another fast bomb from Garbuglio. He falls to his death. There was Badonski as well. Finally they killed the enemy demo, but I'm not sure it'll be enough. Corsa is really low. There goes another one, and it's only Corsa and the Medic alive. Cookie Jake are running away. These aggro mids, they haven't been going well for the Marks. At least this time they got their Medic out and they killed Habib. I mean, there's some silver lining in this one, but really they were probably going to have to go back to last if they can't hold on to this one. Yeah, it really confuses me because the first several mids, they did fine. They they saw the passive mid, and then they just chilled out. That's the proper response. And then you time your aggression all together. You all push your points off of some sort of a damage call, usually, or a frag. But then they just opted to do exactly what Froyo wants them to do. And then, then, then now they're losing. But uh, they are kind of pulling it together. Eric's going to go down to Yomp, but Corsa will die on the other side. Doesn't really matter. They're going to push right on out to Yard here. And they're going to pick up Blaze and Free State too. So they just rescued it, I guess, with the off of the back of the Yomp snipe. Yeah, there were a couple of Freya players just kind of messing around in the lunchbox area, and I'm not really sure what they were doing. It was looking good before, but uh, too many EVL players went over there and were able to shut him down. Banny's really low. He's going to end up dying to Garbuglio, who bombed up on him out of position there. Free State's going to come up on Sniper now to try to counter the Yomp Sniper. Uh, we'll see if this works out for him. It is 100% uber from both sides, and Banny's the only player down at the moment, so I think we might see a stall as Freyotech tries to hold this last point. Um, there we go, actually. Habib finding one frag on the pocket soldier. Rando is going to end up going down. We still have the sniper in forward spawn in Free State, looking to get anything he can while still having the option to change it back to whatever off class he wants. There goes the sniper from Habib, though, is going to take him down, so with two down now, EVL Gaming might be in trouble. Yeah, part of the reason, while well, they're actually pushing in choke, I really like this push. And we'll see what they're doing here. They're going to drop Garbuglio, essentially, and then just run away. They, they had a two-player advantage out here. They're now on the point, but there is an Uber waiting to stop them. They're going to throw Blaze in to get that force. Eric tries to go behind and dies. And now it's sort of even here, pushing in. They do have a player advantage in the local area. Banny is going to get skyboxed and blown away, though. And now that'll send in a tidal wave of EVL. Yeah, Freyotech, they're trying to build the super charge up as fast as they can. It's about 25% add. Maybe if they can work with it, this won't be curtains for them. But Course is really deep in. He's going to find one frag on a free state. Blaze also ends up going down to Rando. But they lose Yomps off the back of that anyways. Still only three alive from Freyotech. Ideal Gaming are certainly going to be pushing in here. The uh, one silver lining for Rotec is they have 88% uber charge. If they can make this fight last long enough, they will get it. But Nurse is at half health already, and she's trying to fight a uh, soldier. She is going to get it and pop this, and this could be the turning ties. But Garbuglio is just hiding all the way up on this pipe. They do see him. Eric's going to be able to shoot him down, and Rotec have successfully saved this off. They got the med pick as well. Cookie Jake going down. Rotec are in a much better position than they were 10 seconds ago. 
Yeah, Kooky Jake got a bullet through the dome, courtesy of Annie on Sniper class. Uh. So that will be the end of that. EVL still two players down relative. But uh, this map does have the yard mechanic, so that's going to slow things down a little bit. And it really, if you're Froyo, you have no real incentive to make a risky push here. Because that'll just give momentum back to EVL. I gotta be careful with this Yomp Sniper. He's getting pretty aggressive as he peeks through this little door. He finds the Demo Man Habib. I watched him peek that, and I'm like, you're gonna get sniped. And he completely got domed. So with no Demo Man for attack, they're instantly backing off. They know they can no longer hold this yard area without the power of Habib and EVL Gaming. I heard another headshot run out. Free State is actually gonna just survive that thanks to a buff. There's a charge shot as well. It's gonna hit quite a few EVL Gaming players. Rando almost died from the afterburn, but he's gonna be A-OK. -okay. Another charge shot comes out of EVL Gaming now, as they're still trying to take the second point. I mean, they got that ground off the yard area, but this is the thing about granaries, that doesn't necessarily mean you can get the point. They're gonna be in a much better position, however. Still trying to poke around here in Lunchbox. Yep, now the sniper is a pretty big challenge, because you've gotta get pretty creative to, uh, to get a frag here, because the other team has a lot of shutter doors to protect them, and a lot of weird angles. But EBL's responding to the focus on the Sniper and Shutter by really forcing in here on to the, the lunchbox area. But they're going to lose their Shutter Door defense in uh, the form of Yamsa's Sniper. And they're going to lose Rando as well. And now there's also a back cap. I assume that came down out of drop down. That's just a scout running around on mid in free state. He looks like he's gonna die. Yeah, finally Corsa takes him down in that 1v1 with help from his medic, but Corsa and they're gonna pop the uber charge off with Cookie Jake. Nursey still has hers, but she isn't being forced. Finally, she has to pop hers off so she doesn't drop it, but EVL Gaming, not a great uber charge for them. There, they're gonna lose one in Yomps as well. Corsa's still in, but here comes a bomb in from Rando. This could actually change the tides. They're gonna find the frag in a blaze as he kills himself with that one. Corsa's still jumping around too. If they can kill Nursey, it's gonna be really big right now. All of EVL Gaming are all over Froyo Tech, but there was a bomb in from Banny. Got the frag on a Corsa. And now we see the nurse is in a little bit better position, but she's still having to fight a lot of players She's being sandwich Marxist. She's actually gonna be able to survive as Banny and Habib kill the players around her Somehow nurse is alive and EVL gaming are having to run away or are they they're still fighting on this middle point They've got three players alive and birds aren't really contesting. All right, they're gonna be okay for now Yep, and we'll see what's going on now because there's a little bit of peeking going on towards garage But I think they're gonna slow that roll down but EVL in position again, they're back in the driver's seat, but the clock is against them because of their three-round deficit. And they're going to end up losing Garbuglio here, or EVL. More normal, typical play, really, here. They do have the Yomp Sniper on deck, so they may be able to use that. But I don't really care for Sniper on, on this particular set of points because it's pretty easy to block the Sniper out. I definitely can see where you're coming from with that one, uh, especially with Banny being so aggressive right now, getting some spam out. But this is where he was last time, where he domed to be, but be being a little more careful this time. Free State's going to be maybe peeking that just a little bit. There's some spam from Garbuglio as well, but for attack, I mean, they know at this point, Nursey's solidly behind some crates, making sure she doesn't peek anything, give anything to Yomps, but... No, it's, uh, it's basically a waiting game for Yomps. I mean, Freya Tech, they need to get a response. They need to be able to capitalize off EVL's aggression. They're going to make a trade there. Blaze for the Sniper of Yomps. Um, decent trade for them, but still, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure anything's going to move off that one, Marxist. Yeah, they just got a normal choke play spam kill on Blaze. And then they lost Yomps to some rollers. And then Corsa mm. dies, and Garbuglio and Rando are destroyed. Mm. And... They're gonna push in straight away our Froyo. Ban uh, <laughs> Banny actually gets quite low. Nursey's gonna be forced, but so's the EDL Uber. And they're mainly having to use that Uber to just get the heck out of mid. There is a jumping around Garbuglio, but not a lot coming out of the Garbuglio jumps. Couple of scouts from EBL Gaming running this left side though, and they've managed to find one frag already, get a second one, and now Habib's in a lot of trouble too. These scouts are both still alive, and one was on Nursey. If Yomps get this frag, Nursey's so low, and Yomps gets it right before being taken out by Banny. That's a huge play, and Corsa's still in here on mid, wanting to find this frag on a blaze. If they can actually do this, the two scouts of EBL Gaming just killed, what was that, five players, Marks? They got a lot of frags in that. Yes, they did. It was a good little pincer move, basically, where... They just ran at Nursey, and I guess the, the mumble was probably screaming about the scout on Nursey, and 
Everybody kind of missed the scout that was in Garage just ruining a beam. That's the great scout chemistry I really like to see from these teams at the highest level. See now, it is pretty big Uber ad for EVL Gaming, about 50% odd, somewhere around there. So they should be looking to push into this middle point. It's going to be tough, obviously, here on Granary, but uh, it is doable for them. They do have this advantage, so we'll see how they want to take it. 100% now, Nurses is only growing, so here they come. They're going to pop it off really, really early, and most of Fire Attack are completely out. I'm not quite sure I agree with that super early pop marks, as they're not getting any frags. Yeah, they got scared. Now, if they were really on the ball, they should just push in and try to force. But uh, they're going to let this come in instead and go for the force once it's already on mid here. No, no, he's going to get killed by the medic. That's cookie shake. Medic on medic violence. So it works out okay. They knew something I didn't. But unfortunately, Froyo is very hurt. Every single player is very hurt, but none of them are dead. EVL Gaming still taking still taking the lose on that one, but uh, I, I was watching Garbuglio bomb in, and he bombed into like three players. He got some damage down, but I'm like, ah, oh, Nurse is going to survive this, and just out of the side of my screen, boom, arrow dropping the medic. That was, uh, that was pretty awesome to see, but EVL Gaming now back with this uber advantage, 50% for them. They should be looking to push into this middle point. Just flip-flopping flip back and forth. Blaze is actually up in this high spot on the lamppost. We'll see if he wants to bomb in. It looks like Cookie Jake is going to be going through that left side, so if they don't watch for this soldier, this could be pretty dangerous for EVL unless they want to uh, pop really early, but we'll see. They're taking a lot of spam. They're getting juggled, and here comes Blaze dropping down, finding the frag on a rando. That's going to be nice. Free State is in behind. Watch out for him as EVL Gaming have popped their uber charge off, and there's the back cap from Free State. He has to fight Yomps here on the back cap. They are going to force him off. Garbuglio's back as well to try to deal with this back cap threat. And now EVL is scattered all over the place. Course is still here on mid, but Donsky is as well. Free State is trying to come back and join the fight, being trailed by two players. Now Free State's in. He's focusing down Corsa, and Corsa is going to end up going down. But Badonsky got the demo frag on the Habib, so that's certainly something. But Banny's taking a lot of damage as well. Freyotech look like they're going to get forced out of here. He almost finds a frag on a Free State, and Freyotech are all the way out at this point. They lost a lot of frags, but Blaze is still in, and this could be the re-aggression, Marxist. Yomps is still in on Nursey. They've got to be really careful. If Yomps get this, Nursey pops the Ubercharger off. That was a really good force by Yomps. Still, once again, EVL Gaming dropping the point, though. Well, Rando was actually camping a corner, too, so I, I guess he was kind of still thinking aggression. But now they're just going to wait on an Uber, probably. Froyo wants to grab Yard before that happens, though, because it's much harder to push out of two into Yard. Just burn the Uber over that. Don't let him have mid, so... Good thinking there from Froyo to use their their player advantage to continue pushing, but it looks like EVL's trying to wrap around them essentially and come in through garage or the side. They will get Eric, and now they're gonna have to use their Ubers shortly. Danny dies as well. They haven't used the Uber charge yet. They're gonna get Yard for free. Got a couple of really good frags. I love that push in. Now they're still trying to get into this middle point, but here comes Blaze trying to get this force out of Cookie Jake. He's holding on, but can't hold on for long enough. Blaze and Free State are both going to go down for that force, but look at the health on EVL Gaming. Four players in the red, and they're going to be capping off this point, but they're not happy about it. Yeah, very unfortunate. You'd like to get through that without being forced, but such is life. And now nursey has got full Uber to try to go with here. They're probably going to wait for multiples. There is a bomb from Garbuglio and a play. They're all in here on EVL, throwing in three players to try to get the force. I like that play a lot, but even though it didn't work. And now they're going to have to back up to second. The risk that you take here is now that it didn't work, Nursey's got full Uber to take your yard as well. Yep. Blaze and Rando ended up exchanging on Freyo's second point. Rando's going for that back cap, but uh, they just exchanged rockets, and they both ended up going down. So, Freyo Tag, they're going to take this middle point, and they're still pushing forward. 20% add, but I think EVL Game are going to be able to hold on. Yomps is still on Sniper. He's been playing this class quite a lot. He's had a little bit of success, but uh, I don't know. We haven't seen anything super crazy out of him, as far as I can remember. But still, Freyo Tag are... Content to hold in the middle, and EVL Gamer content to hold here on second. So it's going to be really up to Yomps to get something crazy. What do you think, Marks? Is, is, it, is Sniper better when you're on this side of the point? Nope. <laughs> it's also very easy to be locked out over on this side. Like, if I were Froyo, they're playing this really passively, and I don't understand why. Like, you can push all the way up to the edge of rock. There's pretty much nothing anyone can do to you. They do kill Yomps, though, so they're going to deal with that Sniper. And 
there. It's going to continue pushing, really. Yeah, EVL Gaming with two down. They really can't afford to stay in that yard area. We'll see. They are going to get their Pocket Soldier back up off that respawn pretty quickly, so... They should be okay as EVL Gaming now are fighting in Lunchbox. Garbulio is going to win or lose that 1v5, it looks like. Habib is still trying to pressure into the point. And look at the wraparound play, actually, from EVL Gaming. They're going to pop their Ubercharge off, and they've got Freo Cap completely collapsed on. But Nursey still has his Ubercharge, and she finally pops to save her scout. This is much better for Freo Tech now as Cookie Jake is just trying to escape with his life. It's not going to happen. Eric shoots him down. Not going to beef any shots this time, it seems. And there's a lot of fighting going down on the second point. Two down on each side, currently a four on four. There was another pocket soldier, so there's only three defending players alive. But he's on 2 HP, Garbuglio is still fighting on the upper area, he's going to be able to take this flank play on a free state, but he's still going to end up losing it to Banny. Froyotech, they've got one player to kill on last, and they're all just going to run to the point, but Nonski, there's nothing he can do. That's uh, that's the match, 5-1, to one, Marxis. Yeah, and friends, that means we will be here for a map 3, which will decide things, not once and for all, but just whether or not we're going to see three more maps. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say or I'm super. If it's the end of season 24. <laughs> that's uh, that's the way it goes, I guess. I can't say I'm super surprised that uh, Fire Tech won this one. I mean, we saw them play this map in the regular season in EBL gaming. I think it was the exact same scoreline, actually. I think it was five to one. So uh, it looks like they haven't gotten any better. Uh, unless you have anything else to say, Marxist, we can throw it over to our analysts to fully analyze that second half. Throw it to the analysts. We're going to take one second to throw to the analysts. Yeah, we, uh, unfortunately the ball slipped out of our hands and kind of comedically flew up into the air. I think they're here now, though. Hello? Yo. Uh, I mean, there was only, like, two rounds in this half, so there's not a whole lot to talk about for mids. It was pretty good on Froyo's part to adapt to how EVL was going to change their mid fights. The first half, I'm pretty sure, EVL did, like, a really aggressive mid, and it it wasn't that successful. They killed Mercy, I think, but other than that, they overall lost it, and uh, Freya were able to find more picks to be able to continue to take points and eventually take last. But the last round was kind of where most of the game kind of took place. Uh, the funny thing about it is, if you kind of like, despite looking at um, the entire grand scheme of you know how this match went, that was very Freya favored. Uh, that particular last round was pretty back and forth. It was a lot of one team working their way successfully all the way to the other team's last and then somehow screwing up and getting all the way back to their own. So it was a lot of back and forth. Um, so there were some adjustments made by both teams to make sure that Freya was able to continue to at least play at an even pace, if not continue in, which they did obviously, and EVL able to make sure that, you know, they've been rolled this entire past half on Granary and trying to make sure that they can actually transition well enough to, uh, to stay in this game and win at least enough mid fights to where they can uh, hopefully like take around or if not take around at least like make the game last even longer but in the end i think uh, evl probably made a, a couple more mistakes obviously and there was uh, a couple instances honestly where i think we were confused about some almost intentional feeding obviously it wasn't intentional but it kind of looked like it in a way that you'd be surprised how deaths and uh, initiation isn't coordinated at all it just ends to nothing happening yeah, um, I mean, for me, outside of the mids there, like, all I saw was just terrible push after terrible push after terrible uber after terrible uber from EVL. Anytime they tried to make a move, it was always like this really bad um, solo uber on a soldier with gunboats. And, you know, back in the day, solo ubers used to be very standard. You just take your soldier in and then you'd, you know, make them multi. But, you know, you also ran shotgun then. And, and teams were quite a bit worse with how they handled uh, playing defensively. And you kind of need a scout in an exchange these days to just come in with your soldier and guarantee a force. Because you only got four rockets. If you miss any number of those rockets and the medic that you're trying to force is confident, you lose that exchange. And I saw a lot of that coming out of Rando uh, a few times. Uh, I saw a lot of just like out of sync pushes where just half the team was in for EVL and then the other half was just 
doing something else, either dealing with a player behind or just delayed for whatever reason, and they just weren't in sync. And and I just think that if you're you you cannot win if you have if you're fighting two separate fights on the map. If you have three players fighting, you know, in X spot, and then you have three players fighting in Y spot, you're just not gonna beat Froyo that way. And it was just really really sloppy play in my opinion from EVL. I, they just seemed really uncoordinated and. Uh, they need to start either communicating better. I'm not really sure what the issue is for them, but it needs to stop. Otherwise, Viaduct, a map that's coming up here as well, is a very, you know, it requires a lot of cohesion, and you need to be really good at just dealing with different threats, um, you know, one at a time, because there's going to be guys behind, there's going to be guys on your medic, there's going to be guys on the flank, and you just need to choose, you need to make the decision on what fight you're going to take at any given time. And, and try and just kill the kill kill one player at a time, or uh, because if you're trying to spread yourself too thin and, and do, which is kind of what I feel like EVL was doing a lot, they're spreading themselves thin through most of their pushes, um, they're just gonna lose like outright on bio. Like they're they're they need to be more cohesive and and just taking fights and make it a six v six or a six v three. Because right now it's a three v5 and then a 3v1 or a 3v4 and a you know a 3v2 and it's just always they're always splitting their team and that's really bad like speaking of sloppy play a lot of times they just push through choke four people walk through and no one checks a trap or med dies or just somebody gets picked off by it for no reason because it's not a secret trap it's just like a really obvious one and other times their Ubers were just so uncoordinated, like Cookie Jake Ubers, but the person he's Ubering either runs too far forward or too far back, and their Uber is absolutely terrible and useless. Yeah, I mean, pretty much what everyone else said. I think they had a lot of uncoordinated, untimely deaths and pushes that really kind of killed their push before it ever really got any traction. That really hurt them in a lot of pushes and gave Froyo a... Uh, pretty good advantages to work with. Also, Props to Froyo though for sticking through, because I know we've been talking about EVL a lot, but if you think about it, I know Froyo isn't that type of team, but there are a lot of teams out there that, you know, kind of frustration and, and tilt can play a p factor when, you know, you're a favorite to win a tournament, you're coming from the upper bracket, and then you just lose the first map and you're not really sure what's going on and how you got outplayed, especially when this was a map that uh, you would lose previously, like the last time they played a BO3. And I'm sure that Furio definitely put in a lot of time to make sure that they could try to win Snake Water again. So uh, when that happens, and you try it, and you lose that map, and you go into Granary, a lot of teams will kind of go into disarray sometimes and not able to be able to figure out what they need to be doing to play more consistently. And they're able to um, take the, the new map change, turn it into a clean slate, and change up how they were playing uh, to fit more with how Granary was going to play out pace-wise and the way that the you have to play the map in terms of the chokes and they ended up being pretty successful with it punishing uh evl for mistakes that evl made more than evl punished froyo for mistakes that they made yeah that's classic froyo froyo's always been really really good at just you know they all the players on that team have a really you know strong winner's mentality and they kind of you know, even if they're down 3-0, you know, the match isn't over for them. They they are not thinking about the next map there. They are thinking about how can we bring this 3-0 to a 5-3 in our favor. And, you know, that definitely shows the mental fortitude on Freyo, I think, uh, in general, is probably a bit stronger than EVL. I feel like EVL kind of falls apart when things go bad uh, a lot of the time, uh, whereas Freyo can kind of climb out of stuff a lot better. So, yeah, props to Froyo there for just kind of maintaining that mental fortitude and, and staying strong and coming in the next map, you know. You know, very, very, very strong here on, uh, on Granary. Also, like a player like Garbuglio, on a soldier-based map like Granary, he, had, he went 8-26 and 26 and almost had like no impact throughout the game. And Free State, the bottom fragger, only went 17-20 and 20 on a really flat map like Granary that soldiers should be doing very well and thriving on, but... Garbuglio just getting shut down so often. We'll have to see when they go into Viaduct if EVL are going to be able to do what Froyo has done and taken their loss and kind of put it behind them and move on to the next map and try not to let it affect them and see if uh, if they can take Viaduct 
and then go into the next best of three, or Froyo is just going to be able to shut it out right here and end the BO3. Yeah. Um, you know, for this map right here, like, everyone's thinking scouts, but for me, I'm thinking soldiers. I really think that, you know, I, there's no doubt in my mind that EVL scouts are really going to do a, a lot of work here on this map. And, you know, I, I wouldn't count out Froyo scouts either, but... This map, a lot of people tend to overlook, is kind of, soldiers do have a huge amount of impact. It's kind of the stereotype in TF2 where, you know, on Viaduct, you know, you, you're just a pocket and, you know, oh, this map sucks, you know, I got to jump around and not get healed and blah, blah, blah. But the amount of work you can do by just getting behind and creating chaos and making it hard for the other team to deal with kind of numerous different threats at once, um, I feel like Froyo really has the edge on that. Their soldier coordination is so good. I mean, Banny and Blaze have played with each other for a very long time, and you know that coordination is really shows with just when you know when Banny's in, Blaze is right behind him, and when Blaze is in, Banny's right behind him, and and I just think that this is going to be a map about the soldiers. If EVL can step it up, and their soldiers can do a lot of work on this map, and actually you know can test uh, Banny and Blaze for, for the amount of uh, kind of impact they're having, then EVL could very well take it because I think the EVL scouts are going to have the edge here, but the soldiers just bring them down by a lot. One thing to note is the last time they actually played product, Garbuglio did go sniper and they did bring a 4-3 win for Froyo, but I'm just wondering to see if we're going to see the Garbuglio sniper come out again or if they're just going to run the cookie cutter and Try and win that way. I'm sure at some point they'll pull out all the stops and everything in their, in their bag of tricks if things aren't going their way, but as their go-to, I'm not sure. It's kind of going to be up to what they think is going to be best uh, against Freo in particular as a team. And I'm kind of leaning towards them going cookie cutter, but if it doesn't work, I wouldn't be surprised if a, a sniper in general, as you know, any of their players, ends up being a thing. Although, I guess, I'm not sure if uh, if any of their soldiers are too keen on playing Scout. I know that Rando did play Scout, but I don't know if they'd want him to do it per se on Viaduct. So I don't know if we'd see uh, Yomps or Corsa sniping and just having two soldiers, which might not really work that well on a, such a Scout-dominant map. But we, we could probably see Garbuglio playing Sniper at some point in the series. Yeah, another thing to point out as well in terms of demo v demo is well, Habib is Habib, and he's a huge impact demo player. He's great at working with heals, and I honestly feel like Bodonsky has been very, very underwhelming for most of this series. Actually, I feel like even the snake win was mostly, you know, I saw a lot of like just really good uh, ubers come out from like Corsa and Rando together going in, and that's kind of what had you know, offer them a lot of success. I feel like Bodonsky has been a little underwhelming in my opinion. Um, and I feel like if Bodonsky himself as well is unable to step it up, like, and just Habib has all the control in the game, then, I mean, there's not a lot you can do when you have Habib just popping off and, and hitting every pipe and every stick as you're climbing that slope. It's just, it's dangerous and you're going to die. I think that on the flip side, though, EVL has Corsa and Yomps, who are generally considered, I'd say, the impact players. And Corsa has been playing incredibly well as of late. And I think Corsa can make a really huge difference in this map. If Corsa and Yomps turn up really big, I think that uh, EVL can get a really, really good chance to win. Yeah, I agree 100% with that, honestly. I feel like looking at the EVL soldiers is going to be the main impact, and if they don't show up, there's almost no way that they're going to be able to win, because even though the scouts are just phenomenal for EVL, soldiers have to just try and like keep their weight and try and counter the Froyo soldiers and try and take a little bit of pressure off their scouts. Well, we can bring it on back now since we've got all six in. If Corn Pop is here, I'm here. Don't you worry, Marxus. I'm just talking with Twi Twitch chat. We're having oh, a good yeah. time. I've been enjoying this Source TV chat so far. 
but we'll see. This game looks like it's going to start pretty soon. Hopefully, maybe, possibly. And uh, thanks, shoutouts to our analyst panel for bringing it in here and keeping us with some kind of air for you guys to see while we wait for this all to sort itself out. But this will be Viaduct. One thing I want to bring up, our analysts brought up impact players and so on. One big thing that I love about Viaduct is that Viaduct is perhaps one of the only maps that we play regularly still where one player can pretty much win the game if they play the best game of their entire life. So it really, there could be a, a giant wild card coming into this if somebody just decides that right now is their time and they <laughs> pop off in a big way. Yeah, there's uh, there's not a much better time than map three of the invite grand finals, Marxists. Certainly, if EVL Gaming win this, they do force a second best of three. If Freyotech win this, they walk away with $5,600. Um, so, a lot on the line for both teams. One thing I would like to mention before we go live is we do have... Well, I'm only 11 players in the server, so we got some time. Um, is these players did face each other this season on this map, and Marxes, I don't remember if you casted it with me, I think we did cast it together, it was a 4-3 to three game for Froyotech, it was really close the whole time, I think EVL Gaming, like, had an awful third round, or final round, sorry, um, but still, really, really exciting, exciting game there, uh, I'm expecting another one, I'm happy that we got this map for the tiebreaker in the first best of three. Oh yeah, we had a pretty classic map rotation here. The, the only thing that was missing was Badlands, was the, the Badlands Granary Viaduct would be the absolute classic tiebreaker setup with classic maps here. So. Badlands is map 3 in set 2, so that'll be the last map if we get to it. Well, that would be uh, the go-to map, I suppose, since yeah. we don't have, we don't have G-Pit anymore to be the backup <laughs> tiebreaker. So... We'll see what's going on. I don't know why we're having trouble getting a player in the server at this time, so hopefully it's nothing serious. They were changing their name. Ah, that is a very important thing to do. You know what? I'm really happy because we got rid of the barcode names. It's now Weed Dong, but <laughs> that's better than I-L-L-I-L-I-L, -I -L -I -L, for me at least. Ah, yes. Well, see, I've got some of these players on my friends list, so... They can't fool me. <laughs> now they're going to delete me. But, uh, yeah, so this should be really cool. I love Viaduct. Here we go. Waiting for the higher seed to pick their side. That's Froyo. Do they want red or blue? They're going to pick blue, says Banny. And uh, now we are off and away here. As soon as the green text hits us up. Also, this map, I, I always used to joke, blue side's best side. There was one season where I'm pretty sure red never won a round. So we'll see what's going to happen now. EVL's on the, the bad side, and they're rolling out, Corn Pop. Yeah, this is map three of the first best of three here in the invite. Grand finals, Furiotech winning this would mean they secure the first place prize money. EVL winning this will force it to a second best of three. Garbuglio bombs really early, kills himself as he tries to kill the dumb man. Habib's taking a lot of damage. Two soldiers try to bomb him. Finally, they get the frag. Corsa was able to finish him off, but they lost two soldiers for that. And Furiotech are looking like they're in a good position right now. Yomps is still in, but he's going to die to Banny, trading for that one on the concrete area. And now we see Eric dodging around, actually doing a great job. Finally, it's a pipe and has to back off to his medic, but EVL Gaming are going to end up losing this mid-fight. Badonski's still spamming a little bit, but Furry Tech are going to cap the point off first, giving them the advantage here as Blaze is still in behind and house doesn't get anything, dies to Badonski. Yep, that was a, a pretty risky setup there from EVL to hang around for so long. Mercy looks like she wants to use this uber aggressively, they're going to. So they're going to go ahead and get that, but there are players behind there trying to link up. That's Garbuglio. He's actually going to get an uber. 10 health. Banny has to back away. There's a lot of hurt players. Garbuglio's play very effective. Yomps is going to kill Habib as well during that exchange. So he'll be back right away with the fast respawns. And Froyo is right in their face here on the point, but... They're going to travel. Oh, Banowski's going to go down to Blaze, so that's going to open the floodgates. Yeah, not a lot of health either on the scouts of EVL Gaming, so Furtech's gonna cap this back off. 238 on uh, EVL's clock, 230 and ticking down for Froyo. 
So, uh, still very close in this match. Of course, taking a lot of damage, actually. Eating some spam there, but he's gonna be okay. Backing off to his team. Here comes a bomb in from the soldier. I believe that's Rando. He's gonna end up going down to Banny, who was on top of him. Blaze falls to Garbuglio as well, though. And EDL Gaming are liking this aggression. They do have a lot of forward scouts at this moment. Looks like we're gonna see Rando fall behind. We'll see. He's actually gonna be right behind Nursey. They're just taking a lot of damage. She is forced to pop that Uber Charge off. Eric is gonna end up going down to Corsa as well. We do see the pop of the Cookie Jake, so this should be a little bit okay for, uh, EVL Gaming, but Cookie Jake's so low and he's really deep in and he's getting this pack. He's all alone. There's a soldier on him now. Cookie Jake, what are you doing? Blaze is bombing in on him and he's going to end up falling. I don't like that positioning from him, but either way, I guess everybody on Furry Attack is dead, so who cares? Yeah, and they broke the old cardinal rule of never cap while your med's dead because both he and Rando get awful respawn times. So that's going to put them in a really crappy situation. And Froyo is going to be able to just come in here. Yeah, super aggressive bomb from Banny. Going to climb over the rock and continue moving forward. Gets in a 1v1 with Garbuglio. Wins it easily. And there's a token counter push here from EVL. Banny and Blaze are very hurt. But they're going to regain the point. And that, that makes it really dangerous. Blaze is going to take the, the arrow that pretty much saves the day for them. Because that, if he'd have died, the long respawn timer would have been the kiss of death there. And now we're going to see another sort of slow roll here from EBL trying to get a pick. Trying to bully back Froyo from the point, but Corsa is going to die here. And a big push in, really, from Eric is going to scare EBL out of the zone. So I love this map. So much aggression. We have a soldier in already. Both soldiers actually bombing in Garbuglio and Rando as they're trying to get some aggression. But Rando's going to end up going down. And there goes another frag. Cookie Jake dropped it. He ended up falling at the end there to a bombing in soldier. And now it's only scouts on the side of EVL Gaming. Nursia is safe and sound back on her side of the point with 100% health and 100% Uber. Yeah, we. it looks like Corsa and Yomps are not going to be able to get anything off that. They're just having to back off to their team. Really strong play from Froyotech. Yeah, but off this last point. Yep, and here we go. They're still kind of in the screwed over zone. They're going to have to run some kind of suicide or distraction play eventually to get this Uber out. They have brought their medic way up. Nursey is going to be forced to pop to Garbuglio, and now they're going to crash in on them. Cookie Jake is under a ton of pressure right now. Is going to be able to escape. Eric with one health trying to get over them. Soldier Bomb comes in from Blaze. And he's going to ruin the day. So that is huge because there's only 16 seconds left on this clock. And it's going to be pretty hard for EVL to cap this out by the time it falls. The only thing is if Nursey dies, then it's tragedy zone. And there it goes. So they may be able to get this. There's going to have overtime, but Annie's trying to preserve what he can here. Scout's going to try to block it. Nope. And that may have bought them a little bit of time to get Nursey up here. Because they've got two minutes, so they're not in any really big hurry. They just wanted to be sure to zero out the clock, because if they cap again, Corn Pop, that's it for the first round. That is, and that last frag onto Badonski is really huge with no demo man. There's not going to be any stickies for quite a long time. There goes the pocket soldier. Free State was able to find that frag. And look at this aggression from Bryotech. They're killing so many players. Everybody's down. There goes the medic as well. It's only two alive. Corsa and Badonski, they're over on their own concrete. They have to stop this point. They're going to throw their bodies on it, do whatever they can. They both get clobbered on. Freya Tech are going to take this first round 1-0. And honestly, not that great play from EVL Gaming. Only 130 on their clock. Yeah, a rough round for EVL. And they've got to bring it back here. You do not want to fall that far behind in Viaduct. Especially when they're playing for their life here in the Invite Grand Finals. They need to win this if they want to continue having a shot at that first place prize. They're going to be taking this mid-fight now nice and slow. Here comes a bomb in from Fryotech with that soldier. Looks like Blaze is going to be getting behind, but Corsa should be able to find the frag onto him. We'll see there's still a lot of fighting here on Blaze. It's a nice shot, actually. Takes down Yomps. And meanwhile, a lot of other EVL players have fallen. Free State's trying to push the pocket soldier. There is someone still in behind on concrete. Corsa's trying to get out. He's not going to be able to get it, though. Free State takes him down. There goes another one. Banny finds it onto Rando. Yale Gaming, they really can't find their footing in this match. Yeah, Garbuglio is bombing really early, and no one is supporting him. Badonski tried, but no one was supporting Badonski either, so it's really easy to back a demo man away, and now you're in a really tough spot because they're being forward held, and you're not going to be able to run any kind of a suicide really off of this. And they are going to get the, the counter Uber out here, but EVL has no players and is super far away from the point. So 
That's exactly what Froyo wants to have happen here, but Nursey under pressure from Rando. Gonna surf it out a little bit and be totally fine. Yeah, Rando just going for that last ditch. Maybe I can kill the medic. He wasn't really in a position to do so. Nursey was able to get away with her life, and Rando ended up dying there. But EVL Gaming, they've broken the forward hold successfully. Here comes Banny, looking to get aggressive. Backs off immediately, though. Doesn't like that, it looks like. Froyotech still holding on to this point, but EVL Gaming have gotten a lot of ground. Here comes Banny once again. He's just going to be getting behind right onto Cookie Jake. Cookie Jake's really low as well. Banny can hit one rocket here. That might be enough, but Cookie Jake has backed off really far. He's going to be able to make it back into spawn. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Froyotech are in a little bit of trouble. They've been pushed back pretty far. Banny dies in the back lines to Yomps, and EVL Gaming, off of this aggression, have managed to take this point off of Froyotech. The first time they've had it all round, Froyo's taking it down to 139 on their clock. Yeah, that's a tough one, and EVL's not really in position to defend against the Super. They might try to take it in here as Froyo. They are going to get it just in time, cool. and back it on up is Froyo. They're trying not to lose their men here. That's the big thing, and it looks like they're going to be okay with that, and the counter is going to come in, but Banny gets absolutely destroyed. And that is going to help their cause quite a bit. Rando, though, is going to die. They're bombing in Garbuglio now. If any scouts were around to support any <laughs> Aviv, he'd be okay. But they're just slow pushing this in. Yeah, Blades wanted to jump, but he didn't quite have the HP for that. Freyotech, now we're going to be able to get some time onto this point. A lot of health down on EVL Gaming. They're going to lose one immediately. Corsa goes down as well. Banny did have to trade for that, but here comes everybody crumbling from the scouts of Freyotech. They're getting so much damage. Free State, he got three or four in there. Eric got one as well. Really good play by the scouts of Freyotech. I'm not sure how many Free State got in that, but it was a lot. Yeah, the, the bomb there at the end was absolutely pivotal. The, the the soldier landed right on the heads of like four players and just totally rocked their worlds. And uh, then it was easy pickings for the scout. And now they've EVL's in the position. They can't really slow push this in. They're going to do a big bomb here with Rando and a scout trying to get behind, but they get wrecked. And uh, yeah, only a little bit of damage on the free state. There is some pressure from behind the point from Badonsky, but... It's not a lot that he can do. He's facing the potential of invincible players. Yeah, that was a good attempt from EVL Gaming. Didn't go their way, but, uh, I mean, at this point, what do you have to lose? You're just trying to build this Uber Charge up, right? So, 42 seconds left on Froyotech's clock. It's ticking down, and EVL Gaming, they still have two minutes. This is exactly the position they were in last round, and it didn't work out for them. We'll see, though. They're going to have another shot. They're going to get this Uber Charge before Froyotech clock that timeout. We'll see, though. They're at 88%. EVL Gaming... They're going to look to go as soon as they can. I guess they're just going to take an even trade. They're getting pretty aggressive. Cookie Jake's taking a lot of damage, actually. They are going to end up popping these Ubercharges off, but Corsa got dropped in the midst of that Ubercharge, and this is already looking really bad for EVL Gaming. There's a lot of Ferrari Tech players on their side. Garbuglio gets knocked down by Blaze, and there goes another one. Banny does die, so that's something in return, I guess, but still we see Yomps pushing forward. Free State might lose his life. If anything, this could be the comeback from EVL Gaming. They need to get on the point right now, but Badonsi gets juggled up in the air, landing on a rock. Blaze kills himself. Here comes everybody dying on Froyotech. Khabib's getting so low. He has to back all the way off to his cliff. Somehow, somehow, EVL Gaming take the point. Well, they've got two minutes, though, again. Yeah. So this is a replay with uh, 30 seconds less time for EVL than last round. So Froyo has shown all game. They're willing. They're perfectly willing to take these empty fights here with no Uber. And Cookie Jake is in big trouble. There he goes. He's going to go down to Banny. And they're going to just recap that and take us to 2-0. Uh, this is just the crumble from EVL Gaming. I mean, this is the map they had to win. It was like, it was the first map. Snakewater was like their probably best map. And then it was this one or Granary. And Granary was not their map. This isn't looking like their map. They have to get one. And, uh, I mean, this is where they need to turn things around. 2-0 at this point. We'll see really aggressive bombing from Rando. He's going to be getting on the enemy cliff, but he's going to be bombed himself. Blaze and Nursey going down really early to Corsa and Garbuglio, respectively. Habib did end up falling as well, so Fire Attack are having a bad mid so far. But watch out, Cookie Jake's having to surf this one beautifully out over the connector, and everybody on Fire Attack died. Finally, it's going well for EVL Gaming. Yeah, EVL finally did the Garbuglio bomb with support. And uh, it turned out much better that time. And now they've got the uber advantage as well, because unlike previous rounds, Nursey went down there. So Froyo's in the sad zone right now. They've got to make a quick move, try to get a bunch of kills before this uber can get into them. They're going to get Vodonsky, Garbuglio, and Rando. 
So the Uber still is not ready yet from Cookie Jake. They may try to force in onto this to block the point. That'll work out great because Nursi is completely out. They did give up uber advantage in that though, I mean certainly they blocked the point and it's all about the point here on Viaduct with this time ticking down, but now for Tech they had that player advantage for just a second and with this uber ad as well they're gonna be able to stay on this point and cap it off, so a little bit of time bought from EVL, certainly not the worst thing in the world, but we'll look, at, look at Garbuglio coming up on Sniper, we'll see, this is the first time we've seen Sniper all map this time and he's poking down actually, Nursey goes down to the medic? Cookie Jake finds the frag on a her, and with that, of course, uh, Fire Attack's going full aggro. They need to get this one. A beautiful surf from Cookie Jake. Not going to be enough, though. He surfs right into Free State, who finds the frag on him. Now, Fire Attack, they're just swarming all over the enemy team like flies. Of course, is finally going to get a frag, but takes down, uh, taken down again by Eric. And uh, only two Fire players alive. That was such good aggression from Fire Attack. Yeah, it was. They, they made the proper call off of the medic death there. And just went for it because here the situation is so bad it can't be any worse if you wipe out after it and uh, they ended up winning there oh wow cookie Jake takes a lot of damage gets thrown around they do bomb in as a response blaze is gonna die but Banny's gonna get Badonski. free state's gonna get Garbuglio that forces a response out of rando and he just gets thrown away yeah, he's still fighting on here. Look at Yomps as well. He's in behind on concrete, gets thrown up in the air, and then gets a rocket off of that top viaduct up there. We see it now. EVL Gaming are trying to swarm this point, but they don't really have the positioning. Looks like they are going to get it in the end. Fire Tech have to give it up. They're putting out some spam. They're going to block it in the end. Blaze is actually jumping in from behind, and all of EVL Gaming have to back off. They still aren't even worried about Garbuglio. Finally, he's going to have to back off. There we go. Eric does take him down, and now he's still running around in the enemy team's area. Just gonna end up going down to Yomps, a little overextended by him, but he got a frag for it, so what's it worth? This should be so easy for EVL, and they're letting Froyo waste all this time, and they still have it popped! There they go, so they finally get this Uber exchange to happen. The point never changes hands, so that was just excellent defense and part of a, a big mistake over on EVL. It's all, it's basically on Garbuglio to snipe the whole team at this point. Yeah, there we go. Starting off with one onto Habib. That's a really nice frag onto the Doman. And there was so many more. Banny and Free State both gonna end up going down to Badonski and Corsa. They're gonna cap this point off, but here comes a soldier jumping in. Blaze isn't able to get anything. Falls to his death. So I guess that's something, Marks. Is the sniper play opened things up, and EBL Gaming were able to right walk in there and get a couple frags. Yeah, they're still a minute and ten ish down. So that's two Uber exchanges at least to uh, to get through this. Froyo is at disadvantage. We'll see how EVL chooses to respond to this. And the aggression is starting to come out of Froyo now. Lots of spam coming down. Eric and Garbuglio and Rando are the hurt ones. Free State also quite hurt. And more or less pushing up here. The Uber is going to come out. Garbuglio dies. It's an exchange over here. Blaze is going to trade out essentially. So that's going to be an even Z's. And now it's all on to this. Can we find anybody overextended? Habib's gonna go down, but so is Rando. Banny's gonna die to Badonski. Now they're still fighting over here in Connector. Eric's actually gonna end up going down. He of course is pushing so far forward. He dies to a Blaze who bumped in from behind him. It was actually in front of him if you go from the team, but uh, he was kind of flipped around there. We'll see. 60 seconds now, the first time EVL Gaming have actually crossed that threshold, they're still uh, losing on that time battle, but it'll take over fairly soon here, 52 to 48 seconds, Fire Attack, they need to get back on this point, here comes the Soldier Bomb, they're getting so aggressive, and Yomps is taking a lot of damage early, but Bandy's gonna end up going down to the flank to the pocket Soldier, and now they're fighting Blaze as well, Rando's looking like he's gonna win this one with the help of his scout, Yomps is able to get that one, Fire Attack, they got the point, but they lost two players for it, Marxist, they should be able to walk right back on here, EVL Gaming, it's still this Garbuglio Sniper as well, so that threat is constantly on the field they gotta watch out for that Fire Attack giving a lot of respect the nursery gets taken down there goes Eric from the snipe as well Fire Attack they've completely crumbled this one I don't like that play at all from them yeah I don't know why they hung around there uh or didn't fin out finish off the sniper that's uh, another big mistake that you kind of go through there but uh here's Cookie Jake with Uber and 20 seconds so all told more or less unless all of EVL manages to overextend and die they have probably got this round. It's all on Froyo to make some kind of a miracle happen. 
Well, Eric's gotten in behind. He's gonna be right on this medic, but or sniper, sorry. But here we see Yomp's beautifully positioned to take him down immediately. Free State gets sniped. This is gonna be the round for EVL Gaming. Beautifully executed by them. They didn't lose their calm. They're seeing spawn. She's not gonna get anything from that. One on the board. This could be the turning point. Marxus EVL Gaming down two to one. Yeah, it is. EVL got it together there. They had a good solid mid and translated it to a good solid round. So. Froyo needs to figure out what's going wrong here and fix their mid. We're gonna see how they attempt to do that this time. Corsa just pistol in from the battlements, it seems so far. That was a nice snipe from Garbuglio on the Banny, only a body shot, but still midair. There goes another one, Garbuglio, hitting some shots at third onto Eric. Three out of the four players dead on Froyo Tech were from the sniper. This is so powerful on this class. You can see everything Garbuglio putting in the work. Yeah, Garbuglio absolutely destroyed them on that mid, and that is super rare. But now that we play in an era where Froyo in particular really favors passive play at mid, Sniper to mid doesn't punish you as much. And we also have the Eric Pyro as a response to the Sniper. Perhaps they're just going to try to flare out there and make it so that he can't shoot. Yeah, we'll see how that works for him. He's certainly throwing some flares over there. Meanwhile, Blaze has taken down Rando, so that's one in favor of Froyotech, and they're looking to get aggressive off this. <laughs> Garbuglio is on fire now, having to run away. This is the cheese strats from Froyotech, and they seem to be all right for them. They've gotten one frag so far. They're going to find another one on Concrete as Banny finds an overextended Yomps there, and there goes Banny actually finally does die to the sniper threat, and here we go. Ubercharge getting exchanged from both sides. Eric's running for it on this pyro class, and I believe there's a pause. That would be the case, sir. So we have perhaps the first pyro exclusive Uber <laughs> in the longest time in TF2 history, and certainly in the ESCA invite grand finals. That probably hasn't occurred in a long, long time. Years and years. So... All they needed to do was exchange there, really, to, uh, you're doing it to preserve Nursey's health. There is still a Garbuglio up there that could ruin your day. And, uh, I should note that that happens two minutes in the future from here. Mm -hmm. So, judging by the clock, the game could be almost over by the time that happens if EVL holds on to this. Yeah, I mean, if EVL holds on the whole time, it could even be into the next round, but where's the short pause, so we're off already. We have a Pyro jumping around, and Freyotech are looking like they're going to be able to cap this one off, so EVL Gaming will lose the point guard. Buglio is still on fire, unless my animations are just broken from the pause. That might be it, but he's peeking forward. Hasn't hit any shots just yet, but we'll see. Keep watching him. Corsa actually really low. He's going to try to chase down a Blaze who's bombing in from behind, and he's all over the place, getting in behind the enemy team's Cliff and everything. We see Badonski's gonna go down from Banny, who pushed forward. Banny's actually off class to scout now that they have a pyro. Interesting uh, class switches. There we go, Eric with the pyro. Finds the frag on a Garbuglio finally with that, uh, I don't even know, with a detonator? Yeah, it's a detonator. Yeah, so, you know, the pyro update hasn't come yet, <laughs> but uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Eric is ready to run, and uh, we've got Banny back on the scout that he's played the last several seasons, really, and proved to be one of the best there is so that can't hurt you on a viaduct and banny still plays this game like crazy so i'm sure he's not nearly as rusty as you would think so we'll see what's going on the hud you know corn pot man it's hard to cast when your hud's broken and i think they're doing this purposely to us because the uh the if you're a newer caster they always tell you watch out for your viaduct's going to be pretty tough don't be scared that you're going to screw it up really bad mm -hmm. but uh, they just decided that uh, we're too good and we need it to be more difficult by constantly breaking the hud for the entirety of the surround <laughs> You know, I, I would uh, I would get mad at the players, but uh, I do have to appreciate that they at least uh, made their names not be bar barcodes uh, for us. Because one player with barcode name, all right, that's 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 silly. Two players with barcode names is is too much for me. So I'm I at least I'm glad that they changed that. Um, maybe not exclusively for the cast, but I hope I'd like to think it was for us. Maybe yeah. they care. My dream would be to play on a team where everyone had the same picture and <laughs> and also were all barcode names. You would never get casted. I would just, I would make sure that that, it doesn't matter if it's invite grand finals. No, we're not watching that. It's not going to happen. The casters that's, don't deserve that. That's my dream. <laughs> in, I don't know. Uh, 
in StarCraft, if you if you're familiar with that, it's really popular to make your name a big barcode for when you're just practicing, so no one knows who you are. And then that way, when you play them in a match, they don't know your secret strats. <laughs> StarCraft is that game still going? I feel like it is. I haven't watched it in it a while because be. I haven't been able to stay up till six a.m. anymore. Mm. Well, I mean, how what's the potential length this could keep going on? Uh, three hours if we go. Three, I can three tell. More laps, I can tell delays? you, I will not be here if we go that long. <laughs> I will die. Mark, and, you can't uh, give up on the people. You'll have to put me in a nerd box in the ground. I don't know, is is it open for the players to play the second best of three another day, or do they have to play it today? Uh, I think we have done it in the past, where mm -hmm. we have moved it. I could imagine that several of our players may want to delay to next week. Yeah. That would be understandable, especially if this pause goes on for a while. Because yeah, what time is it for you over on the East Coast, Mark? That would be one thirty-three. Ooh. I have to get up at 7. Yikes. <laughs> I... <laughs> so that'll be fun. And then I'll be at work from that time until 9 o'clock the next... Until 9 o'clock at night. So that'll be really fun. But at least I'll be able to have mixed drinks after 5. <laughs> Oh, Marxist. I'm just excited to cast TF2. I, I can go all night. I've drank, I drank like a large coffee. I drank a large and a medium coffee today. So, and one of them was during this cast. So I am ready to go. I am, I'm rep for the long haul, which it looks like we might be in because this pause is taking quite a long time. It could be a strategic pause. I don't know. It there... could also just be a problem near the end. You know what it round. is? It's EVL Gaming. They're trying to figure out how to counter the Pyro from Freyotech at this point. They're currently on Reddit, trying to ask all the Reddit Pyro mains how to counter this class because it's it's I mean it's doing it's doing all right. They shut down the sniper for a little bit. I actually have a pretty great chat log from way back in the day when there was a I'm not going to name him, even though he's not around. There was a particular person who was absolutely convinced. They were so good at Pyro. They could make it work in sixes. And uh, they accosted me one day and asked for my opinions on their strategies. And I saved that chat log. It's still on my hard drive, just chilling out. And I look at it sometimes <laughs> when I'm feeling down. Did it work for him? Did he play Pyro no, at the highest level? it didn't work, no. Yeah, as it turns out, Pyro has some problems mm. when uh, you try to run it all the time. I can see where maybe some of those problems would come from. Um, lack of range, lack of damage, lack of movement. That That's kind of everything, isn't it? Yeah, but you can air blast. Ooh, you're right. Yeah, and Extinguisher back then was way better than it is now. True. So, I mean, there's that. Uh, you have funny voice lines. <laughs> like, rah, 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 rah. and uh, you have that taunt that can instantly kill people. The There's a couple of can... classes that have that, though. Well, insta kill yeah. taunts. I also like, I think Heavy's insta kill taunt's more funny in a sixes setting. Because he says, It's the finger oh, guns, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Marxist, so... what's. Oh, never oh, mind. It's like, ah! Nope. Oh, oh. No. oh yeah. No, here we're it good. Is. Oh. Somebody disconnected and we're doing the start-stop thing to get them back in. Or somebody's bad mannering really hard. Are we... Oh, it, it really super wants to. server lag. Yeah, I think that might be what it is. Which is really unfortunate because this is gonna suck to watch. We'll try it though. I think we're live. I, I think this is definitely lag at this point. EVL Gaming... They're sending in the rando soldier bomb at the moment, and uh, now now we're now we're paused. Maybe. No. Nope. Who knows? Maybe that was just some. Hey, we're uh, the lag went away. I'll take it, Corn Pop. This pyro uber has now been joined by a scout, and then he dies uselessly. What a tragedy! The little pyro that could didn't make it happen, but the soldiers from Froyo come in and avenge their masked friend. Well, they gotta look out though. Without the Pyro Garbuglio is uncontested and he is standing up on this cliff. He's waiting for a head to peek out. He actually found Blaze, but it wasn't enough to kill. I believe that was a fully charged body shot. 
It's gonna send Blaze back to get a health pack, and now the rest of EVL Gaming have showed up to the party. It's about even Uber charges. Uh, never mind, my HUD's broken. Who knows what the Uber charges are? They're gonna be running across the point. EVL Gaming Corsa finds a frag on a Blaze, which is gonna be nice. Fire Tech. The rest of them are kind of backing off. They're gonna EVL a lot of space actually. And look at this Yomps from behind. He's getting a lot of good frags here. Nursey did end up going down. Banny gonna fall as well. There's only one player alive here. It's the Demo Man. Sorry, there's another one in behind. Free State's trying to do something, but gets annihilated by the soldier in Rando there. So, EVL Gaming, they're going to cap this point off once again. No idea what the clock is at, but uh, it's definitely good for them. Yeah, the I don't imagine that the clock is super tight right now. So, we're going to see... Oh, it was Habib actually timed mm. out. So, that's going to be problematic for Froyo coming forward here. Because they have no Habib right now. They still are running the uh, Pyro to act as an anti-sniper. There's Oh, there's still a sniper. Okay, so Garbuglio is uh, still being hotly contested here. He's been pretty he's been pretty well so far. Banny's in a lot of trouble, still playing that scout class. I guess, uh, well, Blaze's going to end up going down. There's Free State as well, so two players down on Fario Tech. This was not a successful push-out for them. I was going to say, I guess if uh, Eric had to change off of Pyro, he'd have to go to Soldier, because Banny's currently on that scout class. Uh, I think there's some more pausing happening here. Is this, I don't know, EVL's moving. Oh. So, well, I'm just reading the chat as it goes by so I can figure out what kind of craziness was going on during the pause to uh, make all that happen. Apparently they went ahead and unpaused while somebody w had got up and walked away from the computer and then everyone had to pause like a million times to sort that situation out. But uh, now the push comes back in from Froyo, but... Banny dies way early, so so far his scout play has not been stellar. Oh my and, god! Wow. I'm sorry, Marxist. Blaze and Rando just completely collided midair, and uh, both ended up going down. Garbuglio finds a snipe on a free state. There goes Corsa as well. There's not a lot of Froyo players left alive from what I can see. I'll let you finish what you were saying. I just That was incredible. And it says it ends in 10 seconds. I don't think they're going to be able to block this very well. They... I can't tell if they have Uber oh my or not yet. Yeah, God, it did not Garbuglio? happen. Blaze was mid-air trying to bomb onto the point and he gets a headshot by Garbuglio. That was quite a shot. Even if it didn't matter, I think they lost already at that point. But uh, we're tied at two, Marks. This is coming into the second, third, fourth, fifth round. Here we go. It's a brand new game. <laughs> and that Garbuglio sniper is gone, I think. Uh, no, no, it's, it's not. not there. Our HUDs are just still broken, so we can't tell. Uh, looks like Fire Attack are still pushing across the point. They're getting a little more aggro this time, which I kind of like, but Rando's jumping up to the side. Banny gets sniped down. Garbuglio once again looks to be going on this spree. The first one is on him. Nothing else just yet. We hear another shot ring out. Eric's actually gone up to counter snipe him. Gonna lose that battle as Garbuglio proving he is the dominant sniper player on this server. EVL Game, they're gonna cap this off with two really nice sniper picks from Garbuglio. He's been a key player this match. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's really shocking that Froyo is playing so passively in response to a team running a sniper to mid. And especially since it's Garbuglio that's doing it, it should be really apparent that there are not two soldiers on that mid. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna manage to find a couple of frags here on Rando and also a scout, so that's gonna be nice for them, but here goes Eric again, finally finds the frag, shutting down Garbuglio. EDL Gaming are forced to actually pop off that Ubercharge they're running forward, but Nurse is a bit out of position, she's got Corsa on her, she's gotta be careful, but Corsa's not really hitting the shots that he needs to and gives up a saw. Nurse, I'm not sure what her Ubercharge was, because Hunts are still broken, but I think, uh... I think that was still beneficial for her. This is gonna be a really strong hold from Protec, as long as they can tick down these clocks. Yeah, that was uh, rather embarrassing, and probably the self-esteem of the player will never mention that occurrence ever again. But, uh, so EDL, in a bit of a pickle this time, they do have the time advantage, but Froyo is pretty dominant over them right now as far as position and health. They also have a sniper, which aids in the defense, but here comes the big sack. Garbuglio and Corsa and Rando are all going to go down, but the force does come out with a flying Badonski floating through the air, and that's going to put you in the classic Viaduct situation and set us up for the, what I like to call the 30-second trade. So, roughly, you would expect as EVL, you want to have, uh, have the point in 30 seconds' time, if you do this just right. 
Well, let's start counting down. It's two minutes now. EVL Gaming, we've got 30 seconds to try to get on this point in order to uh, impress Marxist. It looks like our HUDs are fixed, so I'm happy about that. Here we come. They're going to pop off their Uber Charge, turning right into Habib. They want that Demo Frag. They've lost Garbuclio super early to Banny. He's back on Soldier at this point, but they haven't gotten any frags in return. Fire attack. Habib went down to 8 HP, but he still managed to escape, so they're going to get this point, Marxist. I think it'll be in 30 seconds, too, but Fire attack, they're looking like they're coming out of the better end of that exchange. Yeah, Froyo is going to take this right back, uh, theoretically. The reason I say theoretically is there is a Garbuglio. There's a bomb now trying to flush them out so that they'll come into that sniper angle. Mm. And Free State is going to go down and so is Blaze. So that's going to really hurt things. But I don't, they don't have a ton of choice right now in this matter. They need to stop the clock. Oh my god, Garbuglio, another one on Habib, finally. Nursi and Banny are going to pop that Uber Charge off. They're running forward. Banny is on Scout once again, so he's liking that class. I mean, I like the, the play to have two Scouts. <laughs> there goes Free State to Garbuglio again. I mean, he's been hitting so many shots. I like the play to have two Scouts, a Sniper, and one Soldier here on this map. There was a big bombing from Blaze, actually. Managed to find the frag on a Cookie Jake. That's going to completely turn the tides. Banny was looking for something as well in there. It was able to be shut down by Yomps, and now with Yomps still pushing in on the enemy team, Cliff, this is going to be EVL Gaming pushing off this point but uh this is gonna be a big ad for nursey assuming she doesn't get her head blown off yep so here we go blaze may be the man of the hour here because again whoever wins this it's gonna take us into halftime mm -hmm. uh and we gotta be super duper careful with nursey right now to not have her be exposed at any point to getting shot eric is gonna hit a huge shot on cookie jake and then blaze is just gonna Stroll on by and blow him away. So that's going to be tremendous advantage. Got to be, again, still, that Garbuglio is alive. Must be extremely Yomps. careful. Yomps. He's going to die to Yomps. And then they're going to get some frags off of that. EVL is at the worst end of this. But yep. uh, they may end up being able to build Uber at some point. Eric's no, really been putting in work. He's gotten three frags in that exchange. One was on the enemy sniper, one was on the demo, and one was before that. So, I mean, these are the snipers putting in work on this Viaduct. And I know Freyotech's often a team that likes to run you know, more the cookie cutter classes. They don't do a ton of off classing, but uh, here on Viaduct, the snipers are really coming out in force. Uh, we'll see now EVL Gaming. For attack, they're going to pass that one minute march. EVL Gaming still have this time advantage. They're going to want to push right back onto this point if they can. For attack, they're going to lose one on Free State. And Eric is well going to end up going down to a bombing in Soldier of Rando. For attack, are now they got one in return. Banny found that one. Blaze is still bombing in on Concrete, trying to get down Badonski. He gets cleaned up by Banny. But here we go. Garbugle on the back lines is finding Nursi. And he's still fighting some players. He's going to end up going down to Banny, but it doesn't matter. EVL Gaming are looking so strong right now. Banny is the only player, as well as Blaze in behind. Blaze is going to take a 1v1. Here comes jumping in now. Beautiful serve from Cookie Jake. Is he able to survive? He is going to do it. Scouts of his team are able to clean up the attacking players in EVL Gaming. They have 42 seconds on the clock. Watch out for Eric, though. Yeah, uh, in the, during that series of events, Habib got sent to another solar system uh, and then died by cratering against the big tall metal thing where the snipers like to hide behind. So that was pretty spectacular. As we see an Uber come in now, and Froyo is really grouped up. So that was probably the best Uber you're going to see today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would give you that. Corsa got five kills in that Uber charge. Uh, Badonski finding the final one on a blaze. So, uh, this is going to be six seconds left in this clock. Certainly, EVL Gaming, unless they just all hit their suicide bind. Carpuglio again, shutting down Free State mid-air. EVL lead going into the half. Marxist, we may see a second best of three. That is possible. We don't know when it will be as far as tonight, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But uh, now we're going to kick it over to analysis, I think, yes. for the halftime break. Take it away. Boy, I got the stat. Link me up, boy. Boy. I'm pretty sure the underlying tone of, of this map was mostly a, uh, you know, trying to adapt to how aggressive the other team was trying to play Viaduct. And, uh, how successful you're able to be at adapting. Um, I don't think the soldiers on EVL had a very strong performance in the very beginning. Their jumps were kind of lackluster and weren't really getting the most you need out of uh, soldiers on Viaduct. I mean, people always say this is a scout map because it's probably easier as a scout to achieve things, which is 
puts even more emphasis on your soldiers that they have a harder job and they need to like do a really good job to be effective and have a factor in this game and i don't think they had a very strong start um when they changed Garbugli over to Sniper, though, it kind of took away how they're playing and their style, and obviously if you have a Sniper, you're not jumping in as aggressively, and that's where the failed jumps and the lackluster jumps kind of stop, and it forces both teams to kind of play in a different style, which ended up working for EVL, and the difference between the adaptations that both teams tried to take is I don't think how Freyo responded was correct i like i understand trying it but then committing for as long as it was bad in a sense of they shouldn't have kept eric on sniper for as long as they did because i don't think he had as much of an impact as garbulio did and there was a couple moments where i don't think he tried to like get rid of the problem of garbulio per se like it wasn't a counter snipe it was a more of a, a mirror and Garbuglia was doing it more effectively. And if you're, you know, if you're changing up your strategy and you realize it's it's not netting you what it needs to net you, then you need to stop doing it and change it once again. But they didn't do that. Garbuglia also did a really good job of just getting the picks and fights where before he wasn't, or on Soldier he was just getting picked. But the game is starting, so... Yeah, we'll take it over here. 3-2 still EVL Gaming lead in this first best of three. This is map three. And uh, if EVL Gaming win this, they will force it to a second best of three. Freyo winning this would mean that they walk away with a first place prize. So we'll see now. Blaze is going to get behind for early in this mid. Banny as well is going back there. Eric was trying to do something, but he couldn't find it. Looks like Habib's also going to go down. There goes Free State. Complete collapse from Freyo Tech. Nothing they want to do work. And Nursey's being chased in through house by Rando. She actually hit a nice arrow, but Rando's still chasing her. If she survives, there's no way she survives this. Right, Marxis? She's out. She's going to reconnect back with her team in Badonsky. Oh, no! from Badonsky. It bounced off of her body right before she got in. Corn Pop, it was a disaster. I, I don't get what Froyo was doing with that mid. They sent both soldiers behind and they really didn't engage anybody. Because the when you run a sniper to mid, if they do that kind of a flank play to kill your sniper, who cares? It's like you're just losing your sniper. He's now taken two of your players out of the mid. And right now we're seeing the sniper exchange Eric V. Garbuglio. They're just looking at each other. Trotty was thrown out onto point, but Blaze is going to go down as well as Banny. He took a lot of damage, and the pop's going to come out of EVL Gaming. They're running forward. They'd like to get Nursey, but I mean, they got three frags. That's going to be enough, hopefully, to hold on to this point for a little while, tick more of that time off. They're going to pass that two minute mark in just a second here. So, Froyo Tech, they have this Uber ad, but they're still not in a great position. Yeah, Froyo needs to get it together here. They've got two minutes to get it together. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what they're doing here because they do have to worry about the Garbuglio sniper. They're marching it up slow. Badonski's gonna go down to Eric, but no Blaze, no Banny, no Free State. So now they finally get Uber, but unless Eric is able to kill the whole team, it's gonna mean nothing. Oh yeah, and Habib got drawed on. He's just gonna die at the tail end of that to Corsa, who's way in behind at this point. He gets taken down, but look at Yomps already on the sniper, trying to continue on with this aggression. Not gonna get any frags just yet, and he's in a little bit of trouble, but I still love this play. Blaze now bombing in onto Garbuglio. He should get that frag easily for him. Free State found the frag onto Yomps as well in the back line, so that ended up being pretty good for Freyo Tech. They're gonna be able to cap this point off, and it's pretty much even Uber charges. Uh, Cookie Jake just needs to get his up to 100%. No sniper coming to EVL Gaming off of that exchange. Yeah, well, they need to be aggressive here, because you have the potential to just win this outright if you can get a good exchange here. They're going to pop their recharge off really early, showing a lot of respect to that sniper. That's super important, because dropping would be pretty much the end of your game at this point. Now they're going to be sending Corsa in behind to try to get some frags. Eric the Sniper did go down, but there goes another one currently from Banny. That's going to be really nice. Corsa still in behind. Look at these players, though. Free State's just charging forward. He found Badonski. Now he's on the Medic. If he doesn't get this, this will be really bad. But there we go. Finally, Cookie Jake does end up going down to him. And now he's in a lot of trouble. He's going to end up falling in the end. But that's uh, still a really good exchange from Freyo Tech. Uh, they lost Nursey at the end of the course. I didn't even catch that. But that's really important. Now, Freyo Tech are not in a good position. The course of Corsa died in the exact same moment that Nursey did so that's a big one because that will give them uber advantage at least tiny bit but Nursey building really quick they sent someone back for so that may be okay but this is going to come down to a transition fight here 
Oh, Eric had the cleanest shot in his life on a Cookie Jake, and he couldn't quite hit it. That was so unfortunate. Habib's being pressured really hard by Yams, but it's going to get some support from Free State, who forces them all out. Currently, Fartek does have this point, but time advantage is in EBL's favor. Way up in the air, Blaze gets arrowed down by Cookie Jake, so that's nice, I suppose. Banny pushing forward, finds the frag on Orando, making it a 5-on-5, five five. but EBL Gaming, they're not in any position to get aggressive. Uh, slight uber disadvantage for them, but nothing that they can really call... Uh, and he pushes off of EVL Gaming. They look to still get aggressive. A lot of spam being thrown back and forth. There goes the Jurati. Doesn't hit anything for Yotek. They're looking to hold on to this. Just getting 100% now. And Eric and Garbuglio are back to the Sniper 1v1. Here we see Rando actually getting in behind the enemy team. Yomps is there as well. They take down Blaze as a duo. That's going to be great for them. Habib's now coming around though. Is able to take down that uh, scout player. And now here comes the exchange onto the point. Corsa has to be saved. Flash that uber charge. And here we see Rando bombing straight in on a Banny, who is going to end up going down. But honestly, a lot of Faro players are down. They've lost three in walk. Man, look at Rando once again, still in, pressuring them. Eric is still up on the sniper, and he's still going to be a threat. But so far, EVL Gaming have the point. Eric, they need Eric to get some kills here. And they need to get back onto this point really quick. They do, you don't You can't wait long enough for this to be an uber exchange so they're trying to get back in blaze is going to be the first casualty not what you want to see course is going to go down banning is going to die as well it's basically even ish with evl having an advantage and players garbuglio also having a great game and the big bomb comes out no gonna be safe no the scout's gonna grab him and that will be the end of medic time for froyo and that may be the end of the game yeah, the Yomps rando pair is so powerful when they just perfectly coordinate like that. They can get a lot of work done. First, they're going to cap off this point, but literally was a 97% uber advantage for Cookie Jake. So they should be able to get this one. They have quite a bit of time to work with. I mean, 35 seconds, but this uber charge is going to be nice from the Garbuglio. Takes down Free State, able to get that one. Here comes the uber charge popped off, but Eric gets this nice stipend, but Donsky actually goes down to his demo man counterpart act. So this isn't the worst thing in the world for Fire Attack. They don't have anybody capping is the problem. They're getting aggressive, which is nice, but now they only have three players alive, and one of those being bombed in by Blaze is Garbuglio, who's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> what? It's an insane shot on a Banny, and now he's being bombed in by a soldier. If he can get another one, that would be pretty crazy, but Garbuglio, he's going to be somehow staying alive with this. The fight's not over yet. Five seconds left on this clock. It will go into overtime. EVL Gaming, they need to get aggressive right now. Watch out for Eric. He's still on the sniper class. Nursi's going to end up going down. Corso's going to be able to get that frag. There goes Habib as well for our tech. They're all feeding, but they're getting a couple. Habib and Blaze are able to get a couple frags, but there goes another snipe from Garbuglio onto Eric, and everybody's dead on Froyotech. That's going to be it. Marks this, this clock is ticking down 20 seconds. Fire Tech, they might get one more chance at this point. Yeah, and there are only three players here right now to defend. So it's all on the scout. They've got to get on it here shortly. But right now, you can still take your time. You've got to be careful of Garbuglio because you know he's sneaking around here somewhere. Oh, and this is so close. The soldiers bombing in from both sides, but EVL Gaming, they're not able to do it. Fire Tech are going to cap off this point, evening it at three. Marxist Viaduct only goes to four. This is going to be our final round. Yep, this is essentially a golden cap. We won't be going into any overtime on Viaduct. We play it until there's a winner. And here we go. This is for all of it. Yeah, this is uh, this is exciting. I can feel my heart beating. It all comes down to this. Free State's pushing really aggressive onto the counter. Uh, Gray side is going to take down one. Blaze gets another one, and this is so strong from Fairytech. They're going to lose their bombing soldier, but it doesn't matter. Look at this presence they have. Of course, is so low, trying to back off. Garbuglio spawned up on Sniper. Eric came to mid as that as well. So they're trying to get these picks, but no Sniper's been successful yet. They're just poking at each other, and nobody's getting these frags. There goes Banny. actually dies to a little bit of spam from Badonski, so that's going to be something. They still haven't capped off this point, despite having player advantage for almost this whole round so far. They're finally going to get it, but EVL Gaming, they're not in a bad spot. Oh, their medic died. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not having a medic is a challenge. Now, one thing I'd like to see them do is you've got the, the enemy med is out here. Why are you just letting them sack into you and hoping that you'll block them from Nursey? But uh, I guess they're just going to let it ride out here. Oops. Now they're on Nursey, no. they're going to pick him up. So there you go. So they managed to get Yomps there. Nursey is totally fine, and she still got the Uber. And that's going to be a lot of time knocked down, Corn Pop, unless something terrible happens to Nursi. I'm having flashbacks of the last time EVL Gaming and Furrotech played on this map, where the last round EVL Gaming didn't get any time at the point at all. Here we see, though, Garbuglio is going to start off with a nice shot on a Banny, be able to cake that frag down. And here we go, another force. Nursi's 
uh, has to pop that one off thanks to Rando who jumped in there. Still 90% from Cookie Jake, so they're going to have this big Uber ad. This is exactly what they needed to do. Marks is EBL Gaming. They're going to push forward here. Free State taking a little bit of damage. Garbuglio bombed in on him. Watch out for Blaze though in connector. Course is going to be able to pistol down to Dome Man Habib. We did see EBL Gaming pop their Uber charge off as they ran forward. Badonski found the frag on Eric as well. Furtech were able to kite that aggression, so they're going to have a couple players still alive to maybe contest this point. They're not going to be able to get any real time onto it, but uh, EBL Gaming, they're going to pop this one off there get the cap even we do see bandy getting one more frag and for are all in spawn yeah, and whoa big bomb there from garbuglio kind of almost wipes things out that cookie jake was really hurt there for a while if froyo got out of that door it was not going to be a good day but uh, eric back on the sniper kind of out by himself already just floating around doing damage where he can big bomb onto nursey from garbuglio but he'll be cleaned up and so here comes the Nursey Uber. They have a huge time advantage. They're running forward. They haven't popped it off just yet. I'm not sure if they'll need to. EVL Gamer give them a lot of respect, but here comes the bomb and they need this force. Rando drops their Nursey, drops that Uber charge, and this is 100% ad. They're going to pop it off immediately. Cookie Jake running forward on a gray. Free State solo. Blaze as well has to back off at this point, and that's exactly what you need. Let's get some plus twos in the chat. They're putting it in the STV chat. Habib's gonna find one more at the end onto the scout. Course is still pressuring him up here, and that was a nice shot from Eric actually onto the medic. Gonna be able to take down Cookie Jake. Not quite a drop this time, but still really nice. We are gonna see Garbuglio get the counter aggression, take down the sniper, but it's a little bit too late at this point. EVL Gaming off an exciting play. They're gonna end up with a time advantage after this. Yep, they're gonna manage to whittle this down because of the critical drop on the part of Nursi. In that situation, I know you wanna hold that Uber. You just can't, you can't have Viaduct, you can't play that game, especially when it's this tight. So here we go with a sort of transition fight. Blaze is the one taking the brunt of the damage so far, but so is Yomps, and that's going to be a big kill there for Banny. They're now two up as Froyo, but they've got a lot of players with not a ton of health here, but it doesn't matter. As long as they're burning the clock, they, they still have a chance. Blaze... Super hurt, 11 health. He's gonna Ooh. die before the arrow can get him. It's just like the good old days. Corsa picking up the deserved frag. Garbulio's in pretty deep on this left-hand side. He's gonna end up going down, but he found a frag on a free state anyway, so not the worst thing in the world. And Nursey is forced to pop Ruby Charge off now, and she's trying to reconnect with her players, but she's got a lot of blue guys around her. She has to be careful. There is a soldier right here. She's running at him with the Uber Saw. I'm not sure I like this play, but Rando's in a lot of danger. He does get taken down by Blaze in the end of this, and there goes Cookie Jake right at the end of that. Did end up falling to the sniper. So uh, these these medics, they just keep misplaying, I feel, Marxist. This is not great. Course is going to get destroyed midair by Blaze. Okay, Blaze is going to pay for that with Garbuglio taking his life, but Free State returns it right back onto him. They need to kill the medic. They did it. There we go. Nursey is going to end up falling once again, and you got to imagine it sucks to be with these medics at this point in the game. They're really struggling at this point, and the mental factor has to start factoring in as well. Banny getting destroyed again by rando and evl gaming they're gonna cap this point off 12 seconds left on the froyo tech clock yeah and that's a big 12 seconds eric is playing really well right now but gonna get blocked by the door the door frame said you shall not pass oh it's really hurt too up on cliff so this is this is getting really tense yeah, she's gonna get the pack. She's gonna be okay for now, but still looks like aggression. She's pile of stickies! What? Badonski just blocked the door, and she just wandered back to them by spamming movement keys. And uh, Badonski somehow used his third eye or broke the conditioning and was able to see that she stepped on him and blew her away. It's exactly the mental factor I was talking about with Nursey. She is going to be making these mistakes. Now, after that one crucial drop, it's got to be waiting on her. Here we come. The pop out of Cookie Jake. They're going to run forward with this one. Blaze is getting in behind, but I'm not sure it's going to matter. They find the frag on Habib. Banny goes down as well to Corsa. They should know the soldier's back here, but Donsi just saw him fly by. So we see Free State still pressuring in. 25 seconds left on this clock. This is where it all comes down to it. Blaze really hurt on the enemy team grass him dying is gonna be really bad there he goes finally another frag corsa finds it these pro players they keep bleeding in they're two down at the moment they still uh, they don't have a sniper anymore they just want to go pure aggression 10 seconds left 
on the EDL gaming clock. If they can win this, they force a second best of three. Here we go, Froyo Tech, they're running forward. Nursey gonna go down super early. There goes Abib as well. They're gonna find one of the Bonski, but it doesn't matter. Banny goes down, everybody's falling. Blaze is trying to jump forward, but there's only two Froyo players alive. There's three on EVL gaming, it's only Free State. He's trying to do everything he can to stop it, but he's not gonna happen, Marxist. EVL Gaming are going to win this match and force a second best of three. That was one of the closest matches I've ever watched in my life. Yep, it doesn't get too much closer than that, man. So, great game. Congratulations to EVL. They are going to now be equalized and we'll be heading into a second best of three. We are going to probably kick it over to the analyst desk and we're going to try to get a definitive answer on whether or not that's going to be played tonight or if they're going to move it to some other day. Next map, Sunshine Process, Babel. I think, uh, I don't know. EVO kind of had a, um, a rocky start in the beginning of this half because I feel like the thing that gave them success was putting Garbugli on Sniper and like I said before, it made both teams play a certain pace that was obviously more suited to how EVL was going to find success and they took him off it and put him back on Soldier, and it was kind of the same problem where the Soldiers kind of had like a little bit of a lackluster performance off the bat, and like in the first round of this half, they gave up like a lead that was like a minute and a half and dropped it all the way down to the clock and gave Froyo the round, and that wasn't too good. But I still think one of the underlying things is like, I don't know, I, I don't think Eric Sniper was that amazing. He did do some good plays like i'm pretty sure he got like at least two med picks but that's two med picks in the span of two entire rounds and i don't feel like that's necessarily enough for you to stay on sniper 100 percent of the time because they're honestly i feel like there was a lot of times where he wasn't that impactful and uh it was almost as if you were playing with five players in some key fights that evl was able to um take the win overall yeah uh for me, big things I've noticed throughout the game, kind of just reiterating what Sherrod has been saying. Um, you know, at the start of that game, I really saw, you know, the first half, lack, lackluster bombs from EVL. They were, they were just not coordinated. They weren't trying to really get behind. They just kind of jumped in and landed on players and then would just get eaten up alive by Froyo. Um, and it really hurt them. Then, they, then you saw, you know, again, they switched over to the Garbuglio sniper there and you know he did a lot of work and uh yeah, it sort of did uh just completely negate i guess the the poor soldier bom bombs that were coming out of evl the sniper did a lot of work from garbuglio and i think threw froyo for a loop um froyo is a team that typically is not used to dealing with very unorthodox things like that um so i think it did kind of throw take them off guard uh, in general and i also completely agree with you there jared and just how i don't think that eric sniper is the counter um doesn't make very much sense at all that you would uh you would put eric on sniper especially aggressively that's that's the key there on viaduct if you don't have two soldiers when you're trying to push out and you're trying to run a sniper then you completely rely on your player hitting the shot every time you need to push. And that's not always going to happen, especially in a high-level game where the players are going to be pressuring the heck out of the sniper. Like, that's not always going to happen. That's not a... You, you cannot rely on that. And Garbuglio, at the end of the day, just had a better sniper performance overall. And if you noticed as well, he actually tended to uh, switch off soldier and then actually aggress with the double soldier bombs when they were on the attack and then only switching to Sniper when they were on the defensive, which is a much better way of going about that tactic. And I think I think Froyo just kind of threw there by deciding to go Eric Sniper. I guess, I guess they were just, honestly, quite frankly, I think they were just getting a little upset about the Sniper. Like, they're, they kind of faltered a little bit there, and they just didn't know what to do, so they thought, okay, you know, let's, let's switch Eric on a Sniper and, and see what we can do. And then, I don't know, they were stubborn to kind of change back there until, as you saw in the last few seconds of that round there, they tried to change back. Um, and I might add as well, in those last few seconds of the round, um, that was a very winnable push from Froyo, um, pushing out there. And they lost free in Blaze. And I was saying uh, to everyone here on the, on the analyst desk here that... Uh, uh, essentially, 
free and blazed on there. Like I knew that Froya was going to lose the round at that point. It was about uh, 20 seconds on the clock, counting down. As soon as Free and Blaze are dead, I knew Froya lost. As uh, Blaze is just someone that makes so much space for uh, Froya on a map like Viaduct. It makes so much space for Froya in general. So that could have gone either way, if not for that little minor mistake. And that's the beauty of Viaduct. Those kinds of uh, very minor errors just adding up. Um, honestly, Yomps really stepped up there along with just the rest of EVL. They all contributed to the fights. And Froyo, they didn't have as mobile a setup because Banny had to swap to Scout and Eric had to swap to Sniper. So if Eric just died, they couldn't swap Eric back to Scout. So they were kind of caught in staying Sniper. And they were just playing a really slow downwards fight. And just they just pulled it out a lot better, made a lot more room for their Scouts. And Garbuglio really stepped it up for comparing to the first half. Yeah. Yomps on the stat page was 63 and 26. And that's 14 higher, I think, than the next closest person in Frag. So Yomps was really playing, I mean, insane. And Purple Shirt, he was about middle of the line in the server, I think, for Frags. But I don't think that truly tells how much of an impact he was having on Sniper. He was hitting some very timely shots and just insane shots for his team. I think he was really a big, big factor in EBL pulling that out. And I mean, EBL showed a lot of, like, mental fortitude from coming back down 2-0 at the start of the game. I was really impressed with that. They did a very good job of coming back from that. Yeah, it's probably even more of a confidence boost, like, almost near the very end, because you are down, like, a minute 30 and somehow you're able to take it all the way from EVL so it's it's like we've been talking about throughout this entire series you know you have to you know if you're put in a position where you lose a map or you lose a round and you feel like you definitely should have won it tilt kind of can potentially start to set in if you're not too careful and you're not able to contain yourself and the rest of your team so uh, they're able to definitely try to make the most of it in the very last round because it was still like relatively close uh, in terms of time left but they weren't able to take it in the end unfortunately for them